I remember when I was 12, my parents and I, we took a tour at the Walt Disney Animation Studio in Orlando. And it was wonderful to actually see an animation studio. But however, it was apparent that the secrets that they have was definitely elusive to the outsider. You know, because here as a tourist, we were behind a plexiglass. So that plexiglass was pretty much like a solid metaphor for like that veil is mystery. But um, so flashing forward, you know, I, I still wanted to learn animation, but just it was impossible at the moment, at the time. Because in order to learn, you would have to go to out-of-state um university or a private college or even overseas and it was virtually impossible for me at the time earlier last year or so that i um started to take animation courses and i'm i'm telling you i have seen so many online animation courses but there was always so that veil of mystery flash forward um to this year, I came across AMB's um, YouTube channel, AMB Real Animators um, Training, and I was blown away. I just couldn't believe, you know, the knowledge that he was putting out there, the lectures that he was doing. It just pretty much ripped that veil of mystery off the face of the earth. And the thing that really sets his um, archive, his online, to, you know, lectures and stuff apart from everyone else is the basics. That's the one thing that a lot of the books, a lot of the online animation stuff lack was the extreme basics, you know. And when I started on that archive, I started understanding the spacing, the timing the arcs, the um, slow in, the slow out. And with each exercise, it builds up on each other. And as a result, I start s seeing, you know, the arcs. I start understanding and timing things in my head. And it was just so fascinating. And because of that, it just helped revive, you know, my lifelong desire of learning animation. And it just made me so happy that I'm able to pursue and to dream of becoming an animator. So thank you. So, are you going to join the library? Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome once again to another edition of AMB Animation Livestream. Right, so this is it. Um, it's uh, a little bit later than usual, but we're going to be looking at uh, all your amazing work in the Real Animator Training Growth Development and Progress Community in the Global uh, AMB Animation Facebook Community over on Facebook, where you will have decorated the wall with your outstanding efforts so i will be going over there to look at that in the second half of the stream as you all know the first half of the stream um i give it to you guys in the chat you awesome people who have joined me live live uh and you're gonna suggest a character for me i'm gonna google it and i'm gonna tell you the things that i see when i make a little uh, copy or analysis of it and help you uh, improve your draftsmanship and your ways of seeing and understanding of structure and character design blah -de blah 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 right so get your suggestions in the chat while I'm saying hello to the awesome people that are making themselves known and we're going to jump in and do this we already have one suggestion from the lovely Hervonia Baker uh, who says hello the amazing life fantasy Hervonia asks, have you drawn Tarzan? I have once before many uh, years ago in a Ask AMB. I may, he's due for another drawing. We haven't really looked at him in depth the way we do on these streams. So maybe that's tempting. 
uh, Cameron Allen Davidson Black, how are you? The ever shining copper star, the max power up. Uh, Charlene, Charlene Giles, uh, the adorable kitty cat. Now, the second suggestion we have from Max Power, I don't know this one, so I'm going to have a quick look. Is it something I'm going to want to draw L from Death Note? Well, if it was the only suggestion, I would have to, but um, we've got Darzan, so um, I'm, I am think I'm going to lean to Darzan. This is just, I mean, I might do L from Death Note another day. It's a, another very similar uh very generic looking anime design which looks similar to some of the stuff I've been doing with the Cowboy Bebop and I actually preferred the Cowboy Bebop because he had an interesting costume and the Naruto stuff so maybe another time Max Power I'm not saying no forever just uh, I think a Tarzan would be a little bit more interesting for me uh, particularly always an opportunity to study from the maestro uh, Glenn Keane. So let me just let me see if I can find some Tarzan model sheet drawings. Let's do something a little bit more interesting today rather than taking a still from the movie. Let's see um, if I can look at these. These are oh, these are interesting. Um, these eyes are round only slight. I'm just reading Glenn's notes to see if there's something I can garner from these notes and then share with you um he's got some interesting notes here but i don't think that i'm gonna be able to um i don't think i'm gonna be able to translate those notes oh shoulders to, okay this is a good one okay i'll tell you what i'm gonna save this image um and then I'm going to make a, a drawing of his stars and turn around, which is awesome. God, these these drawings by Glenn are just great. Man, this guy is going to draw. Bloody hell. Bloody hell. Oh, my God. I want to save them all and draw them all. Okay, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to make a study, a quick study of... Um, going to make a quick study of this so just bear with me I'm gonna have to go to where I saved these Tarzan models um, okay there's the first one right okay so let's do this this is gonna be a pretty exciting stream um, something for me to learn um, as well as you so let's do that <laughs> that's exactly what i did too <laughs> says uh life fantasy i've got the art of tarzan book and all that which has all this in there but i haven't really looked at that for for ages so just just sometimes you know you move on and you forget how bloody amazing these guys are i mean as, as if you could ever forget how amazing glenn Keane is well actually with his recent transition into cg um i guess i did but uh, man the guy's amazing okay right so let's um enough of me let's move on so you can all hear me now so let's take a quick gander at these little nuggets of information from the maestro himself so um, this is going to be a great lecture so anybody who considers themselves a real animator um whether you're in the library or not stick around for this um, okay so I'm gonna make a quick um, drawing of what I see here and then after I've done that I'm gonna explain his notes for you which are kind of self-explanatory in there but these are the notes that are given to the animator now I'm gonna add a few notes of my own uh, not about uh, doing Tarzan because, I mean, as if I would be that arrogant to add notes where, as if Glenn would have missed his own notes, but more about things that, you know, he hasn't talked about because obviously 
when you're working on a movie on this level, these kind of things are to be expected, right? So it's more he's just telling you the stuff that um, that is not really, you know, that's that's for the animator to bear in mind, right? So the I'm making a quick drawing, as quick as I can, actually, of his uh, his Tarzan. I'm gonna bump bump up my um, pen so I can get this down. So I'm making a quick drawing of the guy's character. Now what I'm noticing here is the angle of the mandible. So we all know that he was pushing for a lot of uh, anatomy um, uh, in this, and the nose is in line with the ear with the, with this project. So he's not talked so much about that in this note this is the main <clears throat> note for Tarzan basically posing the character so when you're on a movie <coughs> excuse me voice has uh, gone all funny when you're on a movie as high caliber as this um, and the original movie is very high caliber stuff um, your characters aren't just there to be drawn and to look cool, right? The way your characters pose is, and I'm giving you this a little bit of skinny while I make this drawing here. The way your characters pose is, is essentially the silhouette, which I always talk about, is when you're doing this kind of, as I said, this deep uh, next level stuff, which is why uh, I speak so highly of the Disney stuff, uh, in contrast to say the anime which I appreciate for other reasons but not really for um, animation or you know because there's no real effort to express personality in the silhouette of the poses in a lot of these materials it's just um, uh, standard like comic book uh, dynamic pose stuff um, Whereas this this material is all about well every guy the every position every opportunity we get to draw the character, um, we're going to try to convey the character's personality, the character's attitude, and we're really going to make these guys living, uh, breathing things that are uh, living breathing. Um, people or personified uh, examples of you know um, people or animals or whatever you want to call them and we're going to really now look at that push for that so while I'm making this drawing here for myself and I'm using this opportunity to warm up my drawing this is my First real bit of drawing since a bit of a week off with my wife's birthday weekend away. So I'm using this opportunity to... Uh, well, I've been kind of sketching my own stuff. Uh, planning in my sketchbook, my Groundhopper project. But this is my first go back at the Cintiq. Right, so this is a, a kind of rough image that Glenn has of his character. And I'm going to put it in black. And it's important that you you think about the things that I was just telling you about trying to find the character's attitude and pose. Also notice what Glenn hasn't talked about here is the perspective of the floor and the feet, um, which always helps give your character... Uh, well, he has actually. He has actually. So, so let's see what he talks about. He talks about... Uh, this is more Tarzan. So he talks about the head must be down, right? So the head is always down. The arch of the back, which he's got here, is very important. So he's written that arch is very important. Okay. Now what he hasn't, maybe he's talked about it in, in maybe I've zoomed in too much. So here he's got shoulders tilted in preparation, right? So what that means, okay, to... To those of you who perhaps don't understand or you think well his shoulders are tilted preparation 
What I love about this character is, is anatomy-wise, if you look at the big Superman characters, they got this huge pectoralis major with their deltoids here, pectoralis minor, and the deltoids like this, right? And then they stand here like this, you know, like those big kind of uh, I will kill you kind of superhero men, right? With With this all coming off the clavicle, the shoulders back. With Tarzan, because he's been developed like an ape, what I love when you look at the ana anatomy is the, it's all about how he's extremely muscular and fit, but his upper uh, delts, his delts are always stilted, brought forward like this, and his chest is more inward because he's used to walking like an ape, you know, and his back is always heart arched. So it's very different to this kind of like, super fit guy with a um you know with his shoulders back kind of thing and his chin hair like this Darzan would be more you know arch of the back head down shoulders down like an ape you know although he's extremely muscular he's he's more like an ape so that is what it means shoulders tilted in preparation so it's it, this is these are some of the things about drawing this this guy on model um, is, is very very important to to get that right so you can't just draw him like in any usual pose like a superman pose or something like that so you gotta so here we've got this he's just drawn an arrow hair of the knee and the you know and the but coming around here so i'm guessing he's saying to conceal this um when when the characters uh he hasn't mentioned that but i'm guessing he's saying because the the hip is hair and you got the butt hair and you won't have the knee don't have his knee down in this position like this right which is what this one is right uh it's better to have it as they conceal it within a circle like that and sit the calf underneath to contrast the other pose but always have the other pose as he's got hair with this arrow hair leg he's written re legs ready for action so he hasn't really mentioned this but i think that's what he means uh because you know with having this one up and this one down this could prove a, an interesting pose as well maybe so maybe he's talking about the contrast but he just says legs ready for action so it could work either way um but that's interesting maybe it means contrast one up one down uh, and then he says direction of the feet makes a much more interesting pose so he did talk about that so direction of the feet of feet so they make for much more interesting poses so that's a very interesting um aspect now here ah yes yes very good so i i was right about this i mean i'm i'm zoomed in so i didn't see the drawing next to it so he says this is tarzan and next to it he's got a drawing um which is what what i would say that uh, maybe a tv guy would do or somebody who was from a lesser school of thought from a from an anime kind of vibe um where this just basic anatomy so he says this is not tarzan so you can see the difference i'm not gonna hang around on this drawing too much so he's got the he's got the legs straight and the other legs straight like this right and this here which is exactly what i was talking about there's no contrast and the feet are kind of facing in the same direction so you can see this is by far you know a weaker pose and then he's got the it doesn't matter if it's kind of to model he's got the he's got the head which is a triangle shape like this 
um, coming down here. So it doesn't matter if it's sort of the model. Um, it doesn't really. He says this is this is a no no. Okay, because he's here. This is what he's he's even written. He's written head up. Okay, head up. Okay, he doesn't want the head up. Let's just make this uh, black again and bring this down to this size here. So he doesn't want the the head up. So I'm going to put little crosses. He's just put an arrow to explain that. So head up. No, no. Um, less arch in a back. Less arch back okay no position of arms is too similar okay so basically we have a twinning arms position of arms same okay don't do that position of legs the same okay ditto 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 legs same okay feet direction same okay no okay feet direction same okay so we don't want that so this shows you the mentality that goes into what a supervising animator does um, when he has to make his character work for animation now I'm gonna see here this is gonna just have a look at some more of these notes here I think this is a lot more interesting than just drawing the character. Rib cage is very important with the character Tarzan. Simplify the shapes, also narrow the the waist. Okay, so he's basically, you know, this is what I I personally do with my own characters as well, my groundhopper character. Um, he's basically made a rib cage shape like this, and he's kind of narrowed it like that and he's shown it like this and on the side is where the character's muscles is going to go like that so the rib gauge is just simplified so then here if there's a more of a interesting pose he's kind of this is I'm very much at home here doing this this is kind of like what I do with my own um because the groundhopper is a bunny, he's very thin, although he's muscular. He's a bit like Tarzan, but not the same. Um, so here you see it goes simplified rib gauge. Simplified rib gauge. Okay, so the rib gauge is very um, straightforward. What else has he got? Tarzan's expression is tension is expressed in arms and face oh that's very nice that's a very nice let me let me study this drawing here so he's got a drawing of um he's got a drawing of the guy uh, the tarzan guy and obviously you know he's doing something here with his hands now glenn what i love about glenn is, is glenn is an advocate just like i am of scribbling you know uh he's not afraid to search he's not afraid to search for the line that he wants all right so all these people who think that that's bad with all due respect i'd rather see what glenn Keane says than some comic book wannabe or some you know whatever anime wannabe right so we're gonna have a we're going to look at the structure of his. He's not talking about how to draw this, but I just think this is fantastic. I might get lost here doing it this way, but I'm just enjoying looking at all the curves and straights of the guys. So he's showing tension in, in the muscles here with the brachioradialis and the uh, ulnaris uh, working together like that the flexor uh, ulnaris so then here what is interesting is he's got his bicep extremely straight and his tricep is just hanging off there like that what a great 
completely i would never do that but i'm tempted to want to do that myself now so he's just straightened off the bicep like that now this guy knows his anatomy so he knows what he's doing what a shape so this comes around here like this then from here we've got the chest coming in now he says simplified rib cage which is gonna be here like this uh, what what amazing abs this guy has right so he has this kind of tension and then his face is buried in here his face is buried in here these eyes like this what an expression man just love it man i miss this kind of glenn i miss this kind of drawing when he went over to tangled it was all you know suddenly everything will look dead because he was trying to make it look all 3d i love the flat dynamic drawing you know that's what it's all about i love this man this is hand-drawn animation this is real animation i'm having so much fun making a study of this this is what drawing is all about man man thank you Hovonia baker for asking me to look at this stuff i've been really enjoying uh going back to paper and pencils i've been doing some concept sketches for my own project and been liking what i've been doing but i have to say looking at this has given me a swift kick up the chops and i'm gonna go on up my game i feel so inspired and so motivated wow okay so we have this hair like this um so what he's saying here he's drawing let's just put that in there so god i'm so wanting to put something in here but it just works it's so clean it just works he's just like a the force you know there's a great book on drawing called force that's i say not to bother with books but that's a good book um so here you see the uh the arrows that he's putting around here um, pushing so everything is and he hasn't drawn arrows here but uh, because of the musculature you see the same thing happening here he's pushing here right so and he says that tension is expressed in the arms and face so when the characters have got tension it's in the arms and the face right uh, that that is one heck of a drawing and that's exactly what i talk about when when i talk about animation drawing um it's just so full of life okay so what have we got here we have got the arch of the back indicative of tarzan yeah so here's another great um pose that we have of this guy um so again he is just he's just like he's almost like putting the guy in a in, in, in a c like that and the head is up here so he says head not up but if you notice and this is why i talk about anatomy being so important his head his cervical vertebrae is maybe um how if i was talking to glenn and i didn't quite understand and i would say glenn sir his head is you say head not up and his head is supposed to be down here but here his head is up i know what glenn would say he would say well it's probably because what i meant is is this about the the vertebrae in the back the the cervical vertebrae is always leaning forward and that one single atlas bone is what moves the head how the head can pivot okay you you can't really bend the vertebrae you can't bends these individual vertebrae to be up and like that right in the neck it's just from that one atlas bone so what he means is his, his vertebrae is all bent in like with the arch of the back you know what i love is like, man you got the pelvis and the you got the pelvis musculature right here right coming in with the um uh vastus lateralis right here you see a bit of the biceps femoris then here just a little indication of the tensor fasciae latae coming in with the 
the squared off glutes like that just just such a joy now here look at this he's got the lumbar vertebrae so important to understand the shape of the you see many people when they draw right let me get this they do they draw they draw this and they say the spine is doing this the spine cannot do that the spine has to of the thoracic spine has to be like this the lumbar spine has to be like that right and the cervical spine has to be like that the atlas can bring the head back here right uh, but it's more the chest that's doing that and the spine is working and leaning back on itself you can't move the spine like that right so what i love about this drawing is you got the lumbar vertebrae here and the thoracic vertebrae in clear view just so simple so simple then here you've got the latissimus dorsi which connects to the arm but also he's fused that with the scapular muscles the teres major the infraspinatus right again here very straight bicep great bit of horseshoe tricep coming here very rough very scribbly and sketchy he's gone here um awesome uh drawing of the ulnaris um, and the brachioradialis coming down here with the extensor and palmaris longus would be on the reverse side actually you wouldn't see that and then here i'm just going through the muscles myself as i'm drawing this then here we have that and then on here now i've screwed up a little bit as i've done that i'm gonna have to do that again because i'm not i'm actually not looking at my not looking at my board as i'm making the drawing i'm just looking at his drawing because i'm so captivated right let me actually position these things in the right place okay i'm literally not looking at the screen as i'm drawing i'm so excited um doing this stuff uh so this is gonna come more out here like this right all in a straight line like that and his arms are very very scribbly right so he's got these lines here like that so it's probably more like that okay then here you've got the rib cage coming in like that um ba -ba -bum. Fantastic, Kevin Silver. See, now you're beginning to understand the lingo of real animators when you listen to them, right? You listen to Glenn Keane talking about certain bones, right? So here we've got the expression of the character's face, right? So you see, you see how the character's face is great and all that, but it's so, in a way, it's taken a back seat to the to the dynamism of the pose of the body that kind of says it all about this um about his personality about his character his eye is more looking up really i'm gonna come in here and then we're gonna frame his face within these um triangular locks it's a very um I'm just being quick. I'm, I'm not trying to get this. As I'm just trying to get this down so we can move on to the next note. So we have this drawing here, which essentially is all about the curved arch of the back, right? Arch of the back is indicative, and I'm not going to write that because it'll take too long, of Tarzan, right? So what have we learned at the moment, right? We've learned to, you know, change the direction of the feet, oppose the arm and leg arm and leg poses so they don't twin, always arch his back and tilt his shoulders forward, okay? That's how to do it, that's now how not to do it. To simplify the rib cage, to show tension in the arms and the face, you know, to strengthen the expression. Now, there's another series of drawings up here, which is really interesting. 
Um, and it goes back to what I was talking about earlier, uh, what I was uh, understanding from his first thing. Um, so here, he's got a, he's got something that life fantasy would like to draw. He's got a big cat, right? That's, that's kind of leaping here like this. Right. Um, let me just make this a little bit smaller. I'm drawing too big, and then the brush is looking. The brush is looking um, thin. That's one of the things about this, right? So let's just. I'm interesting to see just how he captures the line of this cat, right? So he's just drawn a shape like this, right? And He's come in here. Wow, this is really loosening me up. I love it. Right, and he's drawn a shape in here like this. And this shape, look how this, this wave shape, even though we're not talking about this cat, right? I can't help but point out the, the way everything is just this, right? Just fantastic. And then here he's thrown in the, the um, scapula and the forearm just off it like that then out here like this we have the jumping cat so he says he's got a jumping cat right then here he says he draws again he's got the arch back right the shoulders forward in preparation the simplified rib cage right so the rib cage is here right and he's gonna he's then the thin waist right now the the legs forward now he's cheating anatomy right he's really cheating anatomy but he knows what he's doing he's doing it in a good way right so the legs are forward in preparation right the other leg is down here like this right and he's standing kind of like on a curve thing like that now in here he's got his arm now his arms are going to be um, in different positions right so this arm is back like this and exaggerated that rib cage a little bit too much right so then he's got the head which he's just doing as a shape like this and he says this is Tarzan right Tarzan is ready okay even if he is taken by surprise right he's always ready right so he says this is the way you're supposed to um, draw the Tarzan pose and then next to it he has another pose which kind of says what I was saying before the guy with his shoulders back right like this so when you're posing the character like and then you've got the so it doesn't matter how dynamic and musculature muscular the character is right he's saying this is not the way to pose him right not pose the character this way right he says it's too vulnerable vulnerable okay uh, and he's put in brackets to human right Tarzan's a human but he's the ape man right he's uh, he's got all the power strength and dynamism of a gorilla right who is his brought him up as a family right so this is the notes that we have on the Tarzan thing and it is that's the whole sheet you know there are plenty of these sheets I would suggest you you go and google them and have a look um, now what I'm gonna do is very quickly I am going to make a drawing um, from one of these sheets now I may do this one um, 
but that's the that, that one I think I did before um, this one is interesting now he's really scribbled on this he has really scribbled on this but I'm gonna I'm gonna gonna go in there and interpret this as best I can so I'm gonna make another thing here so let's see if I can interpret that in these poses which are less you know so he's got this pose which kind of comes everything's a little bit at a tilt like this right and he's got the head the head is tilting this way the chest which is he says is a simple rib cage so i'm gonna try and employ his structure right so then we we're simplifying the thin waist right then we're having the circular um anatomy of the foot coming on the tree in here like this then it's this is coming out his other anatomy is coming out down here so his legs are bent and he's standing on a tree I guess here so his feet direction is gonna be down here like this right then here his shoulders are always gonna be forward in preparation right so we got a shoulder here right? forward in preparation coming up like this right and then we have his hand here and he's on his knuckles so this is a very rough drawing but I'm, I'm just enjoying right I'm gonna just keep it rough right so then we've got the other arm coming forward just straight like this with the you know the head of the ulna here right and the width of the radius and then the oh i love the hands you know the knuckles coming here like that so that's essentially the pose and he's got his loincloth which um you know comes in and out a bit which goes in with the um now you got to be really careful with the silhouette because you don't want that to look like his dangly bits which is why they you know they've done it quite cleverly um then we're going to do the eye line which uh, you know the eyes his face is quite simple actually almost you know almost anime like in in the fact that it's just eyes on eyebrows a straight line you know with an, with an arrow nose nice kind of little smile here like that very simple graphic two-dimensional face which is what i love now the hair comes in on like that there's a little bit of brow brow hair which i can't quite make out he's very very rough with his drawing so the hair comes down over the side and he's just he hasn't even done it as a block he's just scribbled with his pencil uh, which is cool um, I'm gonna just slightly change my eyes a little bit there you go right so that's one of the angles what I am gonna just put in there a little bit is a little bit of the musculature and explain the knuckles of the character and he's got a little bit of definition of the always the tension the ulna uh ulnaris the bicep is always kind of left underplayed i guess because they want to they want to make him more about forearms i'm guessing the chest comes in here like this i love the way he's drawn it with these rough lines it almost feels like he's put hair on the character's arms you know funny he's he's a bit completely hairless i know that humans are considered hairless apes by some right uh but it's quite funny because he hasn't got any hardly any bodily hair on him at all um which is you think he's you know um brunette uh he would 
have some of that but you know it's just clean and easy visual contrast him to the ape family you know which for the most part has accepted him except for the usual father son thing you're never good enough for your dad right so this thing goes here like that um and this comes out there now again we're gonna talk the feet but uh to make the feet interesting right it's very scribbly but i can see he's putting the dorsals in there and if you know about calcaneuses and all that so if you understand uh calcaneus uh talos navicular cuneiforms feet become generally quite easy so you've got that pose um which is there now we're going to look at the pose from the side um we're going to look he's, he's kind of trying to do a turnaround and this is why you don't do turnarounds like some people see me animating perfect turnarounds isn't really the way we do it for uh model sheets we like appeal when you animate a perfect turnaround you lose a lot of opportunity to draw appealing shapes and appealing poses uh, and one of the best things about our medium is is it shouldn't have to be so perfect right we cheat we cheat all the time to create the illusion of dimension um, so that's that's what that's what makes it good now being able to animate a full perfect turnaround is important skill to have particularly if you want to be able to clean up and do slow slow subtle animation so it's why we do it it's uh it's understanding model understanding solid drawing but as mentioned when in those training library lectures um it's seldom the case uh that we actually create a model sheet that way some of you have seen me doing turnarounds of my own characters like that and sharing them uh i will those won't really be the official turnarounds if i if they, i would i would probably draw up much nicer turnarounds like this uh which explore the character's personality a little bit in the poses right so here we've got the arm just loving the musculature of this character so let's see how we can see the shoulders are forward in preparation here um, and the arch of the back and the neck is buried in the head so let's just do the top half of this guy so like this so then we've got the the nose is coming here the mouth is here mouth is more of a smile right coming in under here like this right. then we've got the eye which is deep into the face right. i love the roughness because he's just he's not you know one of the things that happen when you start to draw the face more detailed is is you lose some of that raw expression and i love the raw expression in this guy here right so he's got this up here you can see little bit of the beast uh design that he's um the beast as, as the man we all draw ourselves i i see glenn Keane in all of his characters i see it all look like him right so this is now gonna come here right and we're gonna have the the round of this knee right which he's always got facing down like this right i love the simplicity of this then he's going to come in with the calf muscle right so the patella is where he unifies it and he comes in here go and see what's going on with his other foot ah it is so rough so his hand is nestled here right I can't I think he's I think he's put something there to rip it go and see what he's done with ah oh, that's his other foot right so scribbly I was wondering what this was right so this is his other foot right so let's just go in here and draw all the bones so I can work make it out right 
um, and they're all kind of sitting up on the tree I'm a little bit out okay let me just do that I mean I'm just eyeballing this so it's not really gonna line up right but anyway um, so then we have um, it never lines up perfectly anyway but still it has the illusion that it lines up so this comes out here and we're gonna have the gastric nimius coming into line here so the straight so he's got the again always legs like the patella is always angling down like that right and then he's put an interesting straight I would never draw it like that I'm really into this actually I think it's cool it's making me think about the way I draw my groundhoppers legs because my groundhopper is a humanoid animal but animals are like quadrupeds and I love the way he's like a dog right or a quadruped he's got the guy on his tiptoes right and he's got this patella angle down it's really giving me something to think about now I know my character is gonna be doing a lot of martial arts moves and stuff but I think I can still do that I can still explore he's where he wears pants my character but it's good to think of it like that good to think of your that's what i said at this high level stuff you never want to just do the cop out you never want to just say well it's just uh you always want your poses to to have that quality right so that's the profile then in the three i love this um so the profile is almost like a three quarter of the body right and the the three-quarter back is just amazing right so we've got the simplified rib cage here right and he's got the arch of the back coming here like this right simplified how are we doing for time we're not even been an hour in so much information I hope you guys are enjoying this right if you are give me a like or a whatever right uh, so this uh, look at the simplified rib cage and the hand and the deltoid comes up here like this All right and again the anatomy of the hand is great because we have this triangle coming here which shows the workings of the knuckles as he's kind of pressing those knuckles down like that Isn't that nice so then here actually actually my bad okay we got no that is his deltoid right that's his chest right so we got a little bit of his chest fitting in there so you see this shape here making the chest like that Isn't that nice then we've got the loincloth of the back but his baltog is just gonna be like that right and there what I love is you see this is this is just fucking great right so the acetabulum of the pelvis has a right the the, the false pelvis is here the ischism comes here the pubis comes at the front right and these are all fused with the sacrum right so this should be more forward leaning like this right coming out there with the sacrum and this is the femur bone right so what I love is he's got very he's given this guy really small buns right he's given him really small buns and he's really playing with the joint of these leg muscles um, coming out of the leg it is just so awesome so here you can see the gluteus coming out there the tensor fasciae latae probably right because this is his gluteus maximum maximus this comes up what a pose man what what a what drawing I mean sadly this movie had to get cleaned up you know and they had to they didn't leave it in rough I mean it takes away the artistry it just it does make it a little juvenile when they clean line I'm aware of that I love the craft it comes with doing things in animation it becomes a little uh doesn't matter what your style is whether it's anime or whether it's disney or whatever when you clean it up and you color it in 
it looks a little it takes away from the artistry you got a little bit of that big dough there coming in here and it's a shame because when you look at these drawings man oh man what drawings what drawings I think I might do a series of drawings of my own characters really rough I've been cleaning my own stuff up and I've always liked to clean it up and make it look professional and finished and all that but I would like to hang something like this personally on my wall it is so bloody amazing um, so I think I might do my own artwork without cleaning it up so much have the working lines in there I'm getting really inspired looking at this just to you know and it's 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 easier you know it takes less time to clean it up you know you just leave it for what it is I'm done with trying to get uh, likes and whatever I'm just enjoying producing what I want to produce um, so I think I'm gonna do that um, so this comes in here like this very interesting pose very you know his one is a lot nicer obviously because he's gone in there and he's he's really worked and roughed and and you know asked questions with his line see like that you know right so um then there's just one more and i think that'll be it you know um there's the entire rear view so we've got the we've got the tricep the ulna bone right coming here like this now i love the rear of the hand i'm just start i'm just just starting and i don't i'm not really looking so much for trying to get structure accurate here i'm just looking at his shapes right so the hand is like you see the abductor of the little finger the th abductor of the thumb coming around here like this so here you got the bicep now i love this coming in here you got that deltoid shape the rear deltoid shape and the 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 latissimus dorsi bulge coming around like that um, so again here you got the simplified rib cage with the back coming here then here you have the thro uh, joining of the latissimus dorsi to the uh, iliac but then you've also got the uh, formation of the thoracolumbar fascia there as well which is great um, so then around here you got all his various uh, his head is just gonna be a shape like this coming off here you got like various um, scribble for his hair which just you know his dreads coming there like that um of course his dreads look cool when they're scribbled um another thing that gets suffered when they clean it up a little bit you know um just part just that's part of the medium in a way when he did those films duet and dear basketball um he went right on to doing it like this and i guess this is how he would have he would have liked to have made an animated feature now this is interesting i can see he has roughed in his glutes um in the back there and then around we're we're gonna keep this this shape right around here like this right just the rear and the calf and then he's got his heel touching like his calcaneus touching there so i know that there's going to be a cuboid bone here like this and then that's where his um uh metatarsals are going to go and all that's going to be fitting in there like that 
then again here he's got the loin cloth to give him some modesty but again he's just coming out here like this with the joining of the gastric nimius now I've, it's kind of rough what he's put there so I'm just figuring that out myself and then the tibia bone and the fibula connection now here he's drawn a circle here so there's no there's no tendon there's no Achilles tendon he's just gone straight into the calcaneus and drawn that in there and he's really got a nice twist on the foot here you know I've gone and drawn it way too big but he's gone and got a nice interesting twist on the foot but like everything I'm not working I'm live I'm being as quick as I can I'm not really trying to make this all line up so perfectly but it kind of looks cool right so we're gonna just put that there so that is the um, that is the turn sheet that he has drawn taking on board um, the images let me just come on okay let's make that black let's save that right so we've gone we've looked at the shoulders tilted forward in preparation the head always down the arch of the back being indicative to the character the legs always ready for action the feet direction change the simplified rib cage the tension of the arms and the face uh more on the arch back more of him always being ready um and then we've tried to take a brief look at the turnaround and employ all of those things while making that study of it what i'm going to quickly do is in the side i'm going to see if i can make up my, i'm going to close these stars and drawings so i can't cheat i've got these next to me so i'm going to see if i can quickly make up a pose of tarzan myself from my own mind right so i'm gonna be here i'm gonna go from memory right i'm gonna make him kind of like excited all right all right so let's let's have something like this all right so um let's think about this okay so let's have this foot down like this and then this foot up like this right so there's an angle here so maybe i won't really see that foot let's make it from an up angle um let me think i was trying to do something with the arms here so i'm arching his back let me think all right yeah he's he might be in the middle of holding a vine so i'm trying to think let's have his arm holding down on the vine like an ape all right let's think about having his head i didn't really look much at his head but i'll just kind of go from memory i don't really know what to do with his hair but okay so let me see if i can make something out of this from my memory this is what i would normally do if i was playing right so we've got the simplified rib cage and everything is coming forward now he doesn't like to draw the bicep and he has a little bit of a tricep right got the head of the ulna with the moving down here like that All right so then we'll have the knuckles coming out like this right 
So we have that. Um, I don't really know how his face goes, so I'm kind of a little bit lost here. So I'm just going to have to kind of just rough something in. All right. All right. Angle of the mandible he had like this. Now you're going to have to frame his hair somewhat like this maybe coming over this side All right then we have maybe something now I'll figure out that later so now we're going to have the clavicle this this is going to be very simplified so I'm going to fit the chest in here and the other shoulder is going to be forward now I'm going to be straight with his arm. He likes to be straight with the arm. All right. And I'm going to play. There'll be a little bit of a tricep. I'm going to play with the straight hair. A little bit of a tricep. you got to get the anatomy in there. All right. So also the way he will hold the vine will be quite animalistic All right like that um, waist will be very thin abs groin his hair but then he's not got much of a butt so this will be out like this he always put that down which is interesting coming in and his feet were always up like that let me we'll probably see it more like this I'll have to sort that out later we've got this one which will be the calcaneus is up here all right i'm going to change this other foot not happy with that right. let's give him his loincloth all right to have that um Let's have his hair coming down over his face. So, this would be more to the side. See, that's not right. Maybe I can, yeah, that's not right. I got to put this more back like this so his calcaneus would be up higher there this leg would be more angled down like that it's probably more like it yeah fun stuff right so that's my first go okay not quite there but my first go at having a animating a draw drawing a tarzan pose after having a quick study of glenn's notes and seeing his model sheet for the character um, okay so that's the first half of the um, of the live stream uh, really enjoyed that 
some of the best uh, character breakdown session I've, I've ever done, I think. Um, really enjoyed that. Uh, so before we go looking at um, your work in the global Facebook community, I'm going to just see what you guys are saying in the chat. Uh, answer any questions that you've been if, if any of you have thrown any questions at me while I was doing all that explanation um, so let's just scroll up um, Studio Anima how are you doing Cinnamon Toast always the way um, oh everybody's saying happy birthday to Nino um, yeah it was her birthday uh, which is why I've been uploading a lot of pencil sketches but I got really excited because I ordered a bunch of color rays they're really hard to get in New Zealand and they are my go-to well I'm thinking of doing all my rough storyboards on in a sketch pad before I go and develop them more in in the machine and I need my color rays when I'm going to be doing that uh, so uh, absolutely chuffed that I got those um, Prismacolor color rays. I don't talk about software, but if you want to up your drawing game, get some Prismacolor color rays pencils. I recommend Carmine Red and Blue, um, dark blue. Okay. Um, Zentron, how are you doing? Um, everybody saying happy birthday Nino that's so sweet of you thank you Nino is my wife to those of you who don't know um, animator Alex how are you doing um, it means Tarzan is ready to spring into action anytime like how a cat is rarely ever at rest and always ready to spring <laughs> well I know what you mean life fantasy but my little princess <laughs> she doesn't look like she's ready to spring into action um uh, ba, ba, ba. community talk going on oh Charlene's not well um, I hope you get well soon Charlene um, I see Tarzan has been a request for this one it's also multiple views too yeah you can't um, you can't request a character like Tarzan and just get a a one-off drawing you want to you want to really get into the secrets and, and understand I saw a documentary on Netflix with Glenn Keenan he was talking about the humorous and femur bones I knew he knew about the bones but it was the first time I heard him talk about it I'm glad I knew what he was talking about but I also liked how he said artists need more respect for the work they put into their drawings absolutely so see Silver Sun as you've been upping your game you've been you know you're able to put into context um, Um, he man Zentron with his he man. Um, Dave Deruji, how are you doing? Um, Tarzan got AMB thinking. Uh, no, there's not going to be a new Groundhopper design for a while. But you know, got to remember he's he's covered his legs are covered by his pants, so. It's just something for me to think about. Um, I'm enjoying the posts of the Groundhopper and AMB lady. Fantastic, Charlene. You're, you're so supportive. I'm so grateful for you. I mean, Charlene is just such an amazing person. Such a, such a joy, uh, happy personality. Comments on my wife's uh, Instagram photos as well. My wife likes to take pictures of the nature. Um, and we just, me and my wife were just saying just how sweet Charlene is. Um, a lovely family. Uh, ba -ba hey, AMB, got any tips? Says Igor Silva for animators working, wanting to work, work remotely in a foreign country. It's difficult because I've had connections back in my industry days, so I can take the I took those things for granted. I've worked on many U.S. projects, a few Canadian projects, some Danish projects, some Spanish projects, um, and all all from the U.K. Um, uh, so I honestly, 
it's difficult for me to give advice about that because it's talk is cheap and if I'm honest with you I got those jobs through once you're in the industry and you do a good job and your name goes around and people know who you are and you're kind of recommended and then you suddenly you get headhunted and you get asked to send a few samples of your work or direct them to an online folio you do that you get offered the job sometimes they ask you to do a test which I always decline I've only ever done a test once in my life I believe maybe twice I can't remember um, and that was my first ever story word gig on Universal Pictures Tales of Despero which I really wanted because I wanted to get out of CG um, so uh, yeah so I would just say just make the applications um, if the application enables you to work remotely from a in a foreign country then go for it if if you have to be you know many of these countries for tax purposes or accounting they the smaller studios they like to use um, they like to do things in remotely but if you're in a foreign country and you're not in the same land then you know maybe some lower budget productions might be a way for you to get in because people are looking to save money get yourself noticed ultimately as I said I can't although I've done it I can't give you advice because the the industry is very different to what it was when I was an animator I'm in my 40s now mid 40s I you know walked into the business uh, just from then on I didn't even use a portfolio for the last past 10 15 years of my career it's all you know that guy that guy that guy that guy so I can't really give you decent advice but the one piece of advice that I can give to anybody that will always stand and always be the ultimate and you see it happening is is just be so damn good right that they have to hire you um, because you see it all the time you know people getting do being amazing on social media and then sooner or later they're landed a gig because they've applied and they've directed them or people have noticed them and then suddenly wow that guy need we need to use that guy or whatever and I know it's a, if you think about it I might be it might sound like it's, I'm asking a lot of you or I'm asking a lot of myself or whoever because what I say for you I say for myself but really that's the way it should be shouldn't it you should be the star of your own movie no one else so just make sure that you're as good as you need to be that in your heart when you look at your work you know that you're every bit as good as uh, your professional peers or if not better uh, and just be confident about yourself always go for things always expect that you're gonna get what you go for and sooner or later it'll happen baby so that's the general advice I give and like everything you know don't be so fragile if you get a, if you get a few knocks many knocks doesn't matter how many times you get knocked about bounce back go again go again go again go again if you want it bad enough you'll get it that's the way it works um I think I may try some Tarzan poses fantastic um, blue color pencil your princess spoil um, ba -ba -bum. well there you go I've inspired people like life fantasy and uh, Charlene and Kevin Silver to do some drawing thank you Charlene um, I'll tell Nino that I'll show her that comment because this chat is staying up uh, Max Power, cheers. Um, Hervonia Baker, thank you. Right now, now then, <laughs> this is that time we go over to the global Facebook community that is Real Animator Growth, Development, and Progress and look at all your amazing efforts 
that you have decorated on the wall and analyze them and suggest what you could do to improve so let's do it all right let's bring in the global facebook community um let's uh first uh oh oh that's some groundhopper development art going on there let me close that storyboard down file save close that down let's go into this and create a new page because we're going to be looking at your work so uh just very quickly this is uh real animator growth development and progress for those of you who don't know it's my free for all global facebook community amb animation global facebook community predominantly uh being utilized by real animator training library members but you do not have to be a real animator training library member to join this group it is free for all and the great thing is, is if you go to featured i might as well say this now uh you you will go to you'll see this post real animator training preliminaries you'll be gifted nine free archives from the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation which is the real animator training library simply copy this access password click on the link you do not have to fill out an email and receive spam or sales calls or anything like that just paste it in there and you get our free access isn't that great okay completely free nothing do it right so you get basic you get three are three lectures from the basics archive two lectures from the anatomy archive one lecture from the intermediate archive one lecture from the random pick up and play lectures archive and two lectures from various edutainment archives um, so go check that out um, it's an amazing free gift for anyone or it's a nice try before you buy for those seriously considering the training library Okay, so um, Charlene has done these drawings in a post, but people are commenting individually on them. I'll briefly touch on them and on the post relating to that. So I will keep scrolling down when we get to that post. We will talk about that. Gerbis, I've never tried to pronounce that surname. Um, Sibzen. Sieb, Sibzen. I, ho I hope I did it justice. Uh, I moved on to the basic head, head turn. Here's my first go at the extremes. Good, you're showing the extremes. The extremes are what we need to see. Um, excellent, looking good to me, looking really solid. Not in between yet. Good, I'm also looking at the body. So this is the final lecture in the basics archive the final few lectures where you learn about solid drawing now Kerbis here as we're coming up I feel that we're losing a little bit of mass could be wrong give it a check okay you're, you've got the drawings I feel like there's more mass to this head than there is to this head um, the chin feels bigger here the chin feels smaller here the chin has got bigger so we could have some chin growth chin shrinkage and growth as we slow in to this pose here so just revise this area if I was you this is the place to really check your keys although this pose here maybe we're growing in size here our head might be gaining a little bit of mass here um, we are going more to a front on um, so this and this no yeah what happens is we gain a bit of mass we lose a bit a lot of mass and then we go back so your first two extremes are bang on right so i would say this needs a little bit more and this needs and this one needs just a little bit less perhaps maybe around the side we are going into a front three quarter here but there's a little bit of you know i know you're copying my drawings but it's always gonna you know i know how to pull and play and make it work and it's difficult to eyeball from the video but you've done a great job um i know that even if i didn't tell you that and you'd go and in between that it would still look great gerbis but since you posted the extremes if this was a cleanup job and you were working on a, a feature film i would have told you that before you go and you know the on the cleanup keys and whatever just to avoid volume issues and stuff but the volume issues would have been slight 
even if you were to in between what you have, I would say don't, you know, you're, you're kind of on the right track. You don't really need to fix it if you don't want to. Okay, it's it's it looks good to me. Overall looks great. Charlene has gone back to the 360 head turn in the advanced lecture. Um, I'm going to go back and catch what I've missed in the initial viewings. Good. I'm a bit uncertain with where the triangle lines up on the trapezius of the profile key, but I will hope to catch that on my redo. Um, you know what you should do, Charlene, is, is you shouldn't necessarily go and redo, uh, redo all of this. Um, if you want to, you can, but if certain things are not, now it's been a while since I've done this lecture, um, if certain things are not quite clear to you about what's happening um, in the video, go go to the go to the section you don't understand and pause it. All right. So the triangle of the neck on the on the profile, I may have shrunk in like this. Really, you know, this should be the trapezius muscle and the sternocleidomastoid muscle. But I gave you this kind of simplified robotic head, which we take even further when we do the woodcutter. Okay, when we do the woodcutter, there's another head turn for you to do in him, where we talk more about uh, the musculature being less uh, ge geometrical. Uh, on the whole, this is looking good. There does seem to be a few irregularities, like the eye left-right balance of the eye. Um, uh, and also the, if you know, the chin. Can you see what's happening here? Is her front mouth is hair like this, and the chin is coming a little bit like this. Um, you, these are these are things that are really going to help you balance out your left right uh, drawing. Also, the nose, the way that's working. These, this again, this mask is simplified with this kind of forward mandible thing coming here. Really, you know, a real human that zygomatic arch links those two, and you, you get something more like this, right? Which, which, which is, but this is the, the more simplified version. So the reason being is so it helps you isolate these sections to help you get them right. Now, your one eye is always kind of higher than the other eye. I can see that. Can you see this arch of this eye? This is higher. So we're getting uneven uh, unevenness in the face. See, by singling out these sections, we can really isolate them and look at them. Now her eye is extremely small here. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about, you know, just follow what I've done in the video. Honestly, I've been doing so many tutorials and so many things. I can't even remember what I did in that video. So just follow. And if it looks like this, then keep going. It'll be right. Uh, but just make sure that your regular, your the things like this, especially on a front, you know, one of the hardest things. All right. One of the hardest things is drawing a front view of a character, because when you when you have it's always thinking, see, can you see the space here and the space here? You've always got to kind of add up. Right. So. You see, this center line is off, right? So it's getting the getting these things to kind of work is always tricky because I can do a nice rough drawing with lots of line, uh, lots of bushy lines or whatever. But if I if I change the angle, right? Storyboard flip selected scene. There's so much line work that it's gone up on the previous studies. Yeah, see, can you see the imbalance? The front view is always the hardest one, uh, especially when you're doing a head turn, because so many imbalances are going to occur. So just make sure, especially when you're doing these, that your front view 
is and and you want it to be drawn balanced not kind of like the way someone using adobe illustrator would just draw half a face and mirror it you don't want to do that right you want to be good at drawing you're doing this to improve your coordination you're drawing so you can see the space between this eye the nose and this line here and this hair is not the same so that's the point of doing this robotic head okay it's it's hair to to train you to balance look at this look at the shape of this side of the head and the shape of this parietal portion and the shape of this parietal portion the shape of this the space of the temple hair the space of the temple hair you see this is where the imbalances occur and those are the things to watch for um, more so than the triangle of the neck which which I'm sure I cheated in the tutorial and I show you how and all that which I can't quite remember now but just keep following along and make sure you know also this ear shape can you see the ear shape it's kind of the ear is reversed on itself here so very important to get those things right um, Charlene especially clearly because you're working clean right so if you're working this clean then you're gonna want to make sure that you've got those issues um, intact Charlene's posting some of her drawings her studies uh, of certain aspects of the skull I uh, can't quite make out what one this is this looks to be like the um, I can't make out that one is it the occipital region or is it uh, what did you say it was you didn't say Zayt my didn't say that it could be part of the frontal socket there I don't know um, so you're piecing it together again here you see you see the mandible the angle of the mandible here you're drawing the skull you're very good at intuitive gesturing Charlene I love your drawing but what's happening here is you're drawing the calvira right of the skull this way but then you're drawing the jaw as if it's going this way right it's not this bad what I've done right but you want to keep that jaw you want to keep it all going this way right you want to make sure that it all goes the same way see um studies of the ear the helix and all the those things these drawings are lovely charcoal drawings that's what i talk about you're really um you're really nice with your gestural drawings very illustrative very fine art um these could be in a gallery they're very very nice i do love your choice of of strokes i think you're very very good at that sweeping uh strokes um which is really really nice um, this is a really really nice drawing as well really interesting expression cheeky cheeky expression but I do see that when you get structural that's when some weaknesses occur now what could be the case is, is you're just not necessary and this isn't a bad thing many people draw in many different ways you're not inclined to be structural you're more about line which is great as long as you understand structure your line drawing will you know will will strengthen it but you don't have to change your way of drawing into this very structured way because uh, I can see that you have this nice line again you can see left right imbalances occurring in these drawings um, so here you're being more structural where it feels that you're stiffening up um, that very very nice uh, loose quality that you have but keep going because ultimately when you're having to do animation characters and things like that you will need to have solid structure but one thing that you have at your disposal which very few people have and you have it and I don't uh, to be very honest with you which is why I'm really praising you for it is these very very nice uh, I think this drawing uh, illustrates uh, I love that ballerina 
this drawing illustrates it best for me these these just these suggestive swooping intuitive suggestive appealing choices for the color and things like that wonderful stuff um all right so diana cortez is bombarding the wall with awesomeness diana cortez has posted this um now i found one of these comments quite strange because he says he would like to offer suggestions and then he says consider retooling the easing on the screen left no 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 we don't retool easing we slow in and we slow out okay we don't push buttons and pull and whatever so no no we don't do that um well, let's see what he means. I, I can't, because of this foolish uh, software talk, I can't, he might have a good point, but it's, I w he means he would revise the slowing in on the screen left hand a bit. Um, when it comes forward, just push the prior frames before the key pose back in positioning. He probably thinks you can grab it and slide it back and, you know, uh, right now till it looks a bit like the hand is popping into its peak compared to the other what I will say is, is he he's got one thing um, this is really good Diana and for the most of it I mean it, it hurts my head listening to feedback from a software puppeteer um, but he's he, he what he spotted is kind of right in a sense of one of the arm swings is greater than the other right the left arm swing is a little smaller than the right, the screen right arm swing. But I do like the, the looseness that you've put in the wrist on the left, um, which, which isn't quite happening on the right. Now, the looseness that you've put in may be um, because you've followed the figure of eight arc. And I know that in my video, which you followed, the figure of eight arc on this arm is a little bit more than it is on the other arm so you've actually followed the video pretty darn well and this is looking pretty accurate the only thing is um on this arm on this side which is what he's telling you to fix this arm right i can see what he means about slowing in a little bit on on the screen left arm here right but actually your screen left arm is doing the right thing there's a little bit of up down wobbliness here okay but i, I i'll forgive that that doesn't matter what i like is to see it's coming down here that's what it should do right and then it's coming up so it's going down and creating a figure of eight as it's coming up and then it's going down and see it's creating that figure of eight now this arm i don't believe it goes down on the down right it just swings back ah yeah no it does good but it shrinks okay so we lose mass here so i don't feel it's coming down as much right see and then we gain a bit of mass so it goes to the side but what what so just subtle things this arm is going a little bit this way it should be just going this way and down uh in relation to the other arm and then the swing on this arm is greater than it is on the other arm but overall diana i would say that this is very good because um i've categorically said it of all the exercises in the basics archive i'm the one who made them all this is the hardest one to do and you've actually done a really good job at it I wouldn't bother revising it. I wouldn't bother going back and fixing it. These are little things um, that uh, that you've missed. Um, on the whole, it doesn't really affect the test too much. Onward and upward, which you clearly have been going on with here. <coughs> Cameron Black doing some uh, studies of the carpal bones. Fantastic. Can you name them all, Cameron, off, off the top of your head in the chat? Let's see if you can. 
Um, if he hasn't gone to bed, it might be a bit late for him. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Angela Walker. Um, I'm going to have to hold back from uh, talking about these, Angela, because I've got to focus on the library posts at the moment. Um, I know that she's trying to do a staging short uh, and designing the room for her bear. Look, I can't really say much about it um go and look at some photographs of kids rooms from catalogs okay um it's quite easy in that regard um you can go and say kids bedroom ikea or i wouldn't go to ikea it's not very warm and fuzzy uh you could say kids bedroom uh go and look at uh google kids bedrooms Google kids' bedrooms from movies, look at bookshelves, things like that, uh, toy boxes. Uh, kids are normally not organized. Um, you could look at Lilo's bedroom in Lilo and Stitch, background art, but I would always go to the real thing, okay? So those are some ideas for that. Diana Cortez is having fun. Diana Cortez, if anybody wants to know, I see people are looking in Diana Cortez's exercises and she they're asking where where did she which training video this is. Um if you if you're a library member, uh some of you are and you're asking, so let's go to the uh dashboard. So <clears throat> the archive for this is the pick up and play animation lectures archive um, basic face and head construction so in this archive diana has followed this video with this generic character okay one of my old characters from my teenage yeah, we, years which i just did with this just very quickly in a one hour video we piece together a character so diana has followed the basic exercise from that and she's really having fun and she's taken she's done it with a number of characters this is dimitri from anastasia this is great diana that you're trying to consolidate what you're doing from the basics archive with the random lectures and then and then having a go but You'll see why I, you know, we go into more depth in the advanced archive, uh, and you only really get a taste of this early on. Uh, you know, we don't even do this in basics and intermediate because while you, while it looks nice and it feels solid, there's a lot of uh, irregularities in here, uh, which you'll learn, like what Charlene is learning, as the more complex you're getting um, to manage. So. Here, the first thing, you've done a great job with the eyes, by the way. Um, uh, but the sudden change of the eye direction there isn't quite right. And again, we talk about how to do that in the advanced. I'm not going to I'm not gonna say too much because this is, this is something you do in the, in the advanced archive and you're still doing basics. But there's nothing wrong with you uh, having uh, fun trying to consolidate. But can you see what's going on with your hairline? Hair, there's... The hairline is, is constantly changing on your character's face. So now it's growing really high. Now it's going low, right? Um, so the hairline is changing. Then here we look at the top of the guy's head, right? Now suddenly that drops all the way down here like this. Can we see? So we're losing a lot of mass as we're trying to do the back of the character's head. Now, maybe you're looking at his model sheet and his model sheet, as I said, when we were doing the Tarzan model sheets, model sheets aren't drawn to animate perfectly round, okay? Normally, when we do head turns like you did in the basic head turn, we often cheat and go from one pose to another quickly in and out. So this skill is a skill of in-betweening and solid drawing which 
isn't necessarily going to add up with what you see in the model sheet and adjustments need to be made sometimes. So what's happened with your head here, we're seeing a, a, a huge irregularity in the, the mass of the skull. It's almost like he's looking up. He's changing his head angle and looking up and then his head is coming back down here. But I tell you what, Diane, this is a fantastic attempt um, and I love your confidence and I love the fact that you're feeling empowered from doing these training library lectures to go and have a little play and explore. And I can see that you're natural. You've got a natural ability to draw well and you've got a natural eye for solidity. Uh, so which is why you've managed to pull this off to create a pretty decent illusion but there is this strange bobbing quality and it's mainly because that huge mass of skull on the back of the head just drops uh, where his hair is there like that. So that's that. But uh, great effort. And here you've done one with uh, Batman Beyond. Uh, I always loved the design of Batman Beyond. I thought it was one of the best uh, designed TV shows I've ever seen in my life um, I like the fact that you're also playing with shadow again you're losing some consistency on that this is a simpler character but again it's got problems because you're kind of locking onto the pivot point of the ears at one point and then suddenly the ear is locked on at the pivot point and then it slides back there like that which means that we've got a weird growth happening on his eyes like this as his eye grows and slides to the side of his face, right? So, very, very interesting. And I, would, I personally would like to look at the model sheet and explore how to turn this guy's head myself uh, with the lighting because this, would, this is a very graphic style based on Art Deco. I love it. And it would require a lot of cheats uh, that 2D hand-drawn, real animators, I should say, not 2D puppeteers, would utilize to, to pull off by snapping from one pose to another. But um, unfortunately, it is a TV cartoon, so it's poorly animated. But, uh, but in the right hands, I would love to see these characters animated by, by, by a James Baxter or, you know... I don't have time. I could animate them myself, but uh, I don't have time to do that. I've got my own passions and visions, but I would love love to see these guys moving well for a change because TV, the TV material is very weak, but one of the best design shows. Another great effort there, but again, many inconsistencies. But don't let that uh, knock the wind out of your sails, Diana. I love your passion. I love your energy. I'm so happy to see you posting on the wall again. And you're going through the exercises. You're going through the... Ba you're not uh, being detracted. You're, you're actually trying to tie in what you're learning in the basics archive with what you've seen in the random pick up and play archive. I can feel the enthusiasm here. I can feel the energy that you really feel that you're progressing and you're wanting to explore and try out these things and 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 put them to the test and you're doing a good job but there's so much more of your training that you need to focus on solid drawing will come and it's why we do it in the order that we do it so you've got the intermediate archive to sort out go go through and then you'll really uh, I don't recommend you jump onto that advanced lecture because there's so much more to animation than just solid drawing these things can be a bit, a bit of an ego trip and an ego boost, but being able, even being able to do them well doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to animate well. It just means that you can keep things solid, right? So never forget that in that intermediate archive, Diana, Diana, yes, we've got uh, the six laws of life, okay? You've got anticipation, you've got um, primary and secondary action, you've got exaggeration, you've got staging, you've got appeal, You've got squash and stretch. You've got follow through, overlap and drag. Okay, you've got all these things that you need to um, to bring into your animation. 
Mage Burger having a go at some anatomy here. Okay, he's he's playing with the muscles. Uh, I don't know how much of the skeleton you've done, Mage, before you're playing with muscles, but it's good. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna talk too much about that. Okay. Um, love that picture. Um, Savada Zacharians. Let's see. Let's see how well you've done this time. Whether I've got anything to say other than fantastic. Um, I remember this one. Yeah, great. Another, another pretty flawless recreation of the heavy ball. I'll see. I'll have to see if the pendulum tests you. Oh, that's nice. I love the first. I love the squash and stretch. If I dare say, Savada, you've done it even nicer than my exemplar exemplary one. The squash and stretch it there is really nice. Um, nice. Could be a little, maybe feels could could be a little bit slower if you wanted to do a lighter one. But that that's 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 beautiful. That that's really nice. I don't, again, Savada, you're not being tested at all with these first few exercises. You're doing them. You're doing them. Uh, textbook. Uh, you know, ten out of ten. Uh, I'm judging them, of course, by what you're following, which is the library lectures. So there's always room for improvement. But at the moment, uh, just keep going. Uh, the Let's see if the pendulum tests you. I know it's probably not. There's a simple thing that uh, people often miss when they do the basic pendulum swing. I'll see if you I'll see if you uh, I'm, it's not like I'm hoping you mess up. But I'll see if you if that, if that one catches you. Let's let's see. Uh, but gr as usual, uh, great work, almost perfect to the library examples. Uh, nothing more to say. Okay, Angela. See, I I gave you feedback here last time, Angela, and I don't know if you see my videos, but can you see how the the leg is on the floor here, Angela. So how can, how now can this, unless you're, see, the, it doesn't feel like there's that much of a difference. See, now this leg is down to the ground here. So at first I was thinking that you're doing the whole, you know, this leg on this ground and this leg on this ground. So I thought, let's see, but now your rear legs are all the way down here. So... You, you really need to keep an eye on these things, Angela, because you're doing a lot of work, but you're doing this. It's like it's effort, but the effort is not going anywhere if you're not going to keep an eye on the main fundamental things, Angela, right? So, so you see the dog hair is really small. Now the dog hair is really big. So the thing is, you got to really look at your drawing, Angela, of one pose and another pose and then ask yourself. And I'm, I'm kind of repeating myself. I don't mind repeating myself. I'm here to help you. But I do wonder if you heard me the last time, if you watched the video. Um, because I know you're not live at the moment. So many people don't miss the video. So you got to just simply ask yourself, does it look right? You know, this is, he's too big. Overall, he's too big and he's too small. So if that's the case and he's got four legs moving about and some legs are up here, are up landing on an invisible ground up here and some legs are landing on an invisible ground down there. Is it worth continuing? I can, I can never spell continue. Continuing without, without fixing these things. So... If the framework is flawed, Angela, it doesn't matter how much you draw or less play or whatever, it's going to look awkward, right? So I, the, the training library isn't about, it's, this isn't like a Richard Williams book, all right? It's so much more uh, sophisticated than that. Richard Williams books are good, but people tend to just copy his poses and try to make them match because you're copying from a book. In my video, you're literally watching me, explaining everything, saying, watch this arc here. Can we see this arc moving? You're watching, you're, you're, you're drawing as I draw, and you're creating the, the poses as I create the poses. 
and then you're always flipping forwards and backwards. The videos are supposed to be completed as you do them. So it isn't like I'll go and I'm not saying that you've done this, but it feels like what many people do with Richard Williams' book. I'll go and pause the video and copy the frame, and then I'll go and see the next. If you rush through it and you don't absorb what I'm, the things I'm saying, and then every time, because we do it in a hierarchy, Angela, we always do these things in a hierarchy. We always go, okay, well, we'll do the contact, right? Then we'll say we'll do the down, right? Or the pass, right? Then we say the down and the up, right? And we're always flipping back and forth between. So if the contact is huge and the pass is small, or the up is small and the down is big, we can't continue. Or if the if the floor of the, if the feet are on the floor of the contact hair, and the feet are on the floor of the pass hair, we can't continue, right? It's it's all got to line up. And the, the whole point of these things lining up is, is then when we break it down further, they're going to follow a path, an arc, right? The basic fundamental arc so that they so that they all add up. The thing is, is what I suggest you do is, is if you're working on this project right now, this is where your attention is at the moment. You should focus on the thing that you want to focus on, okay? I know you're trying and you're working hard with, with real animator training, but don't rush anything, okay? Because just doing it won't mean that you, you're able to do it, right? You know? Um, you've, got to, you've got to do it and do it successfully and make sure that things are adding up and, and things that... Things that are pretty obvious to you when you look at them like, oh, well, I've drawn him far too big here and I've drawn him far too small there. It's it's fix those before going any further or just take a break from this and focus on this. Don't you see, because even this is kind of rushed. So this is nothing to do with real animator training, but you're employing the staging things that you've learned from real animator training, right? So, yes, it's it's all very well to draw the box here and say, right, so the bed is going to be here. But then say, well, where's the window? You know, where's the curtains in relation? Does he have a bedside table? Does he have a lamp? Okay, go and look at some photographs of those things and think about where they'd be. Before you even do the, the 3D drawing, do a top view floor plan and say, okay, bed will be here. Mm, no, maybe the bed will be here. Uh, and the front door will be here so mum can keep an eye on him. Maybe his wardrobe will be here. And his his work table will be here. Uh, maybe his work table should be here in the corner of the rooms where his toy box is. And he's like got a little tent in the corner of the room. and he's Or whatever. So go and research of the kind of kid's bedroom that you'd like. So the staging exercise was all about those things, right? It's not about, well, I've drawn a plan because the staging exercise says draw a 3D plan and all that. It's, it's staging is about what's happening. And in, in that plan, there was it was a stock room. So there was going to be in the middle of the room, the, the sack was going to walk and there was going to be a heavy box that he couldn't lift. But there was all these boxes and a window and so... You need to really do a bit of research and think about these things. So what I'm getting at the moment is a lot of spared energy. Energy going... Energy going like... This is you, all right? This is real animator training. This is your project, right? That you're working on. And... You're putting some hair and you're putting some hair. And there might be other things going on in your life that I don't know. Where, you know, family, relationships, work, friends. Okay. M me, uh, if I was going to be you, right? I would say, okay, well, right now, I'm really into this. So I, 
you know, I know that I haven't completed real animated training, but I can't help it. I'm into this, right? I have to go to my family sometimes. I have to go to work sometimes. Um, I've got to do my basic needs, toiletries and food, but everything else, all my energy that can be spared into that, right? Let's stop that for a while now. Personally, I, w I wouldn't want you to stop this, but it's not my life, okay? It's, uh, you know, you need to do what keep, what, where your, uh, what your heart wants you to do, you know? But your standards, you know, the standards are never going to really be raised unless you slow down and you do things with the attitude of, this is a success and it's not just going through the motions all right it should never be about going through the motions it should always be about i'm going to do this i'm going to do it properly and it's going to be good right so and even here you posted i think i made the legs too long so here's the thing you don't need to post it angela you don't need to share it with us because it's not healthy right I'm always here. I've always taken some time to give you so, some support and give you these talks, but it's not healthy because what these talks are is they're all, they're always giving your subconscious this thing that you're not good enough. Okay, you're always getting it wrong. You you need help all the time. That's not true. You don't. You are good enough because what have you said here? Right? You've said it here. I think I made the legs legs too long. Obviously, you know it's wrong. So here's the thing, don't share, okay? Don't share it until you're ready to share it, right? Because then the energy that comes back will be like, wow, Angela, that's great. And you knew it was great. You didn't know it was wrong. Maybe there was one thing you couldn't quite get, but it was to the best of your ability. You knew it was great. You work really hard at it. And everybody's like, wow, yes. Yeah, and that has happened to you before, and then you were pumped, I remember, right? So it's all about the energy. So now, no matter how much good intention my energy is trying to give you this help, it's going to come off in a way that will make you feel like, oh, I've done it again, or whatever. And that needn't have happened. And, and, and I'm trying for that not to be the case with the energy, which is why I'm bringing this up. I'm trying to motivate you and help you. But then at the same time, I know about what the subconscious is and I know where it leans towards. So next time, if you think you've made an error, Angela, don't don't just you don't have to share in this group. No one needs to know what you're doing. But you, if you know you did it, if you know that you're working, that's what's important. We don't need to see that you're working. All right. Then, you know, you're working and you've put the you've put the effort in and you share it and it is working and it's all working well we'll we'll see it all right and we'll say wow or we'll say i'll say angela that's really good there might be a slight issue here and there but wow i can tell that that, that this is like i know that you're you're more than capable of doing it um i'm gonna hold back on alex's uh anatomy posts i think alex needs to start revisit start start doing some animation <laughs> animation now um this stuff is all good, but uh, he can keep doing this. But again, he's got to a certain level, but you can't force this stuff. He's going to, you're going to develop at the speed you're developing at. Cameron trying to put in some skin on the bones. Um, I know sometimes it's good to see you drawing with blue pencil. Sometimes these pencils are a little soft, Cameron. Yes, go and define them a little bit yeah little bit flat in the drapery studies but i can see that you're um you're trying to get it in there again when you do the when you do the outlines cameron i can't i don't know like so i'm gonna make it up so it's never good to make it up but i'm just gonna make up the the guy's pose of wearing the the toga or whatever right so if you like got a flat shape like that right so and it and it looks really flat 
always look for where you can see like the underlying drapes right so maybe there's a little one coming here i'm exaggerating this right but then see the triangles and and draw them in there make these drawings sculpted right take it beyond because at the moment you're kind of falling into this thing where you 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 you, you had some exponential growth in your drawing but now i can see this pattern emerging um where you're falling into this kind of flat uh outline just drawing outline so let's see some structure some structural shapes some working going on in your drawing right just like we did in these glenn Keane drawings let's see those uh so you've got the outline shape let's see you working that ulna right and you know just having because all you know is bones right and when you don't know bones and there's drapery right so let's see some of these like i'm exaggerating here and just going with what i know right so let's see some of these triangles coming if wherever you see them let's just see it all okay put your brain to work and start drawing those lines on the page again here let's see some of these lines right so this woman with the elbow right let's let's see like i know maybe you've just got something like this but let's see you guessing that elbow there like that right and just just right. a, let's see some of that guesswork of the scapula you see just put it in there right even if it's not in there put it in there to to help understand right so here i'm gonna rib cage spine okay lumbar spine okay belly right so again here just see how i'm just putting this stuff in there right iliac bone right so even if you're not quite sure of the muscle then guess where the the bone of the leg is there like that right and start putting those things in there that way you're gonna you're gonna go to the next level right that's what i kind of asked why i want you playing these guessing games so that when you start to draw these things you start guessing so like here you got this and you're making the the hand drawing here okay so don't make it like a clean up animation drawing of a hand, right? So hair, hair, just guess, guess. Okay, a fold of skin, meta, meta, knuckle, right? Hair coming here, just guess it. And then you can, then you can start putting these, um, these other things in here right and this will improve your drawing tenfold right see it's just a start. it doesn't matter how messy it gets just then then the corpals that you're working on guess that this will be the um radius right coming here right uh, guess it right guess it have fun um same well alex is saying uh good night that's the same for you alex when you do your drawings right the same almost looks like cameron with his sword um hervonia baker i've finished the second pendulum swing assignment let me know what you guys think Okay, Hervonia, this is great, but what I will say on this one, your, let me freeze frame here, right? It feels like you're getting too straight with this line, right? You don't want it to be too straight. You want it to be a little bit like this, right? Or even if it's, even if it's, I don't remember when I, I did this tutorial almost five years ago, right? The library's almost five years old, right? So 
even if I was saying it was kind of straight, I would have made it a little bit kind of that, right? Because at the moment, it it almost feels like I know, and I know you would never do this, right? So I know you didn't, but it almost feels like you've been using uh, the software line tool and just rubbing it out to create this, which I know you didn't do, right? Um, but but can you see that? It just creates that, just takes away the flow of it, right? Takes away the flow. That's the only thing, otherwise the arc is fine. Um, Selena Nina. I'm going to save Selena Nina's post. I'm just going to see what we have. Okay. All right, I'm just having a look at what I can talk about. Okay, Hung Ming Hui's drawings I'm going to leave out because I've kind of said to him what I need to say. I'm going to work my way back up to Selena Nina from Daniel Garcia here. Uh, Daniel Garcia, this is a nice uh, thing, but I just want to give you something to think about. My sister-in-law asked me to design a car sticker since they didn't have the motive and they just wanted simple stick figures. Okay, let me let me tell you how you could... Um, how do I simplify the anatomy into a stick figure and make appealing representations? This is cute, Daniel, but let me show you something that'll switch on some light bulbs. Um... Because I know you've been working a lot of, on anatomy and structure and that can stiffen you up a bit. So let me just say that we have this kind of effect, right? Could be the letter M, right? McDonald's. Apparently McDonald's was supposed to represent a wholesome woman's bre breasts. I don't know, understand that, but there you go. Right, so, so we've got this coming out like this, Daniel. So here we could like have appealing poses. So even if you want to kind of like have them kind of like um, you could like have him walking out like this, right? Right, coming in with his arm further back. Right, so he's got this arm. This arm, if this leg is forward, then this arm should be forward. So let's just think about this. All right. This could be coming here. So let's have him turning. All right. So he could be turning this way. All right. So this arm could be coming this way. All right. And then we're going to have him walk in this way. All right. So the framework, I'm keeping in balance with this foot, right? Now I love the pose of the little girl. The little girl is great, right? So the little girl is going to be like, she's got her little foot up. I'll keep her legs straight like a little girl, kind of like wander, wandering straight like that. Turn one the other way. Remember what Glenn said about foot direction, right? So... Again, here, maybe this hand will be like this, right? Changing the M up slightly, right? So it's coming here. The little boy, it's kind of like this. So keep this. Little boy's, he's a little bit taller. So he's going to be. He's going to have his foot in this. Let's keep him in a passing position. All right. So let's keep this to be his passing position. So again, all of the usual frames of walk. Right. So then this, he's going to have his hand coming up. And the mother's hand is going to be like this as she's going to be looking this way holding her baby right. 
this is my first initial idea right so then her foot is going to be out this way maybe in a little bit here like that okay I could tone the dad down a little bit All right. so the thing is the appeal comes from the posing rather than the separate elements of the stick figures uh, being one continuous line so I'm gonna go again right so what I have at the moment here is I have this line for for the union of the hands right this comes into the baby right then I'm gonna think about the body language right I like the body language that you had of the father being but I'm gonna have him more turning towards the kids right because the kids are small right? you could have him looking at looking up like that There we go, something like this. Right. I have his head smaller to make him look older. Right. So we go. So that's more of a flowing pose that we figured out with him. Right. Then we've got the little girl. Right. So his hand is going to be under her hand just gonna be over his hand like this or it could be the other way around he could be I'm gonna have it the way I initially put it what feels good for the little kid the little kid feels good being under so his hands gonna be over like that right. Right. and she's gonna be you've got it coming down which is nice so let's let's strengthen that arc and go with what you had so you got it coming down which makes it lead into this guy who's got her hand here like this which is great so now she's gonna be turning this way and gonna put in some anatomy on this so she's going to be bobbing on this little tiptoes like this but I'm going to keep her leg kind of straight maybe straight like this okay let's bend it slightly I wanted to her to be marching like a little kind of matchstick girl, but let's keep it easy. This is a live stream. I don't have time. Head is going to be bigger on the kid, right? Bow tie, I like. Hair. Okay. I would, I would, I like the Christmas tree hair, but I would have it doing something like this, right? And then maybe I would soften it like that personally bushy right um then we got this guy in his passing position right and his head is gonna be a little bit bigger like that and then we have the mother finally so his mother's gonna have her hand up this way I think I could tone that down mother's feeling a little bit big so let's have mother's hand this way 
not as nice on the silhouette of the boy but I guess it's more relaxed maybe mother's hand can be this way why am I flipping now I'm gonna keep mother's hand this way it stops it from being like this but I like the inverse like this because it moves in nicer I'm gonna have her looking maybe her and dad looking together at each other like this and even though she's got um, a skirt on I'm gonna find her legs um, Maybe more something like this. Yeah. So they're all in a straight, all kind of at the same line. Uh, improve that a little bit, right? So we've now got this as our silhouette. Daniel um, which we could then um, we could then right start playing with the silhouette of the clothes right so his shorts are gonna be like this right Right, so we've got one short open, the other one there like that. And his shirt. Gonna be like that. Right. So we've got, we've got, we can now then make it simple. Like this, see? Simple shape which we can take further like that right now we look at her so I will make hers more like kind of little girl shape like this so the skirt little girls are cute with their big skirts uh, me and my wife often reminisce how cute our daughter used to look when she was dressed by her mum with these nice skirts before all these ripped jeans and things came into play. Right, so big boots like that. Yes, there. I didn't look at his boots, so he's going to have his boots coming in here like this now again her hair <coughs> I'm gonna make more like rounded because I just think it's cuter All right now this boy's got a, a cap so let's have him looking at the sister so we can see that gap let's give him a little bit of a hairstyle at the back right. now he's dressed like dad right. so we're going to do the same thing All right. see and he's got big welly boots or as in New Zealand they call them gum boots British Wellington boot Wellington fucking boot mate right so here the mother will have again I'm gonna give her looser sleeves like this there's a little baby here which is kind of cute so I'm just gonna make it like a little maggot right 
in the in the hand, right? Go like that. And the mother has got um, a hairstyle that I'm gonna maybe frame around the baby's head like this. And then she's got a skirt, which we can then keep in line, but then open and close. Put some frills, pleats on it if we want. Right. So then again, we there we have um, a kind of basic stick figures, and they can still be stick figures. Um, if we go here we can just put the stick elements in them I won't do them all, all right. I'll just do the dad alright so Can be right like that. Now remember the front feature of the face with the ear, right? Just like that. And then the smile. Put a little nose on there if you want. Oh, he's got a hat too, okay? So he can have a hat too. Kind of like the, the hat that you gave him. So the hat can come back on itself like that. There you go. So they can be stick figures. Okay. Um, so hopefully that gives you um, food for thought about posing, silhouette <coughs> and things like that how to make it stronger uh, <coughs> excuse me uh, right so that's daniel garcia's post i like that post thank you daniel for sharing that with us um, hervonia baker is obsessed with hervonia i'm gonna say this um I thought I shouldn't say it, but I'm going to say it. If you want to improve your character drawings, it doesn't matter what you pick to draw, to be honest with you. You could pick Goku from Dragon Ball or anything, and your hand-eye coordination will improve. But i just got to remind you that Bonkers is mainly drawn by people in overseas studios, and their cartooning is not great. So if you want to do a character like this, I would suggest Eric Goldberg uh, characters or chuck jones or anything like that look i know you love bonkers so continue with it if you want you really like the drawing continue with it this is a hand-eye coordination thing it's going to improve you no matter what but just just to remind you that if you're d developing your if you're doing it also because you think you'll get, you won't really get strong cartooning from this because you know tv animation uh but uh but that said this the whole point of this process is hand-eye coordination understanding of silhouette and all that so just making sure uh that i've got 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 your attention regarding that it doesn't matter it's your personal preference but just giving you that bit of information um your complete pendulum swing for the most part looks good uh, the only thing i will say hervonia the string appears to get a little longer here maybe your arc is slightly out um and also the placement of no that yeah hair okay Especially when you're slowing in. Now, later on in later videos, I started doing this myself because it was happening to me. I started adding a little thing to make sure that the, the pendulum string didn't go on this side or this side, right? We want to keep it 
in the same place so even if it's here it's got to be in the same place so if the string deforms and bends you know it's in the same place right it's always in the middle right so just that otherwise it's a pretty good uh, pendulum test to me um, what's the other one oh did we not did we look at this um, I also have completed okay um, let's look at this one it looks like the same thing you've posted twice this one the pendulum seems to stretch a little bit on the way down um, it is a difficult exercise as I said the thing that makes it difficult um, is getting the arc right so that the string is always the same length now sometimes people measure and that's what I do in the video I take this and I rotate it and I measure it and I get it because sometimes it feels like it's wrong but actually that's the arc so th just you know don't do the exercise again um, it feels all right just a little bit on some of the arcs it feels a little bit off um, okay so Pedro Pedro has now uh, doing this one this looks like a better drawing in the thumbnail Pedro um, okay I feel the back is coming up far too much higher than the front all right so that feel if you look at the energy in the back legs right really expecting that pushing down to send that up door so really high but that's all it is right just that right that's about as high as it goes right so remember it's like a chain effect we again also here look at this so much up down which is good but then the reverse side is not okay the, the what happens here has to happen on the other side as well so this this fellow is not moving high enough right the front half it's always like it feels like he's it all, it's almost like a, a human who hasn't got much upper body strength, right? So it's a human crawl, it feels like, with the, with the butt. Um, being high. Yeah. Actually, that's a bit bad because if that's the floor, then that should be the floor, right? So, but you know what I mean, right? So, do much this, right? So, and also the question about no, don't do it again, Hervonia. The pendulum series is, is such where you have to do the same thing all the time, okay? Don't do it again, right? The pendulum. The, 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 these that's what makes these live streams a danger is you don't hang on my every word like this is not feedback this isn't official feedback right uh just go through the library like if if, if you're 75 percent accurate with my video then move on to the next one right so um but the drawing of the dog feels a lot better pedro um that your drawing is you, you you're now actually getting the drawing right which is what i told you about last time so everything about the mechanics now works right except for the up down it now doesn't feel like his legs are like daddy long legs or whatever we were talking about last time they actually feel like proper working limbs um So that's pretty good. And the th other thing about Ped uh, Pedro, you sent me a private message. You should just ask it in the group. It's not like it's just between us, right? I mean, you asked me about to, to tell you to help you with timing. Look, timing is the first law of animation and the last law of animation, all right? You learn about spacing, slowing in and slowing out, which ultimately creates the effect of timing. But timing is 
it's the the easiest thing to say is is how long how long did it last <laughs> okay how long does it or did it last okay or does it take to do that's what timing is how long does it take to do and all these things you're learning in the library about thirds halves favors uh, how to break up a second 6 12 24 okay um, how to break up a second 6 12 12 18 I was wondering what that was about 6 12 18 24 right how to break up a second that's what you learn in the library right how to break up a second how to change the effects of the speed so if it takes two seconds or three seconds how to break up a second how how what's the speed you want that's on you okay so that's why timing is so hard it's um timing isn't a chart with halves and thirds and all that um Michael Kilner Davis, this already looks good. Um, I know that this exercise won't be a challenge for Michael, which is why, like I said, it already looks good. Yeah, Michael. It's good enough to me. That was also on my video. Uh, there was a slight effect as if he was waving in the turnaround, which, is, which wasn't intentional. So... What you've put in there was in the actual video that I did. So, um, because I did two turnarounds. I did one to exemplify the turn, which was perfect. And then I recreated it for you. And as I did that, I did it rough and it caused that wave effect. So, yeah, I would say that you've pretty much copied it um, as is. Again, uh, good stuff. Again, uh, Angela Walker, Daniel Garcia or uh, says it perfectly here. What is her personality traits, her place, her story that would make it easier to judge? At the moment, it looks like a regular young girl. And your reply is, is that was just simply design. She likes drawing up as a, dressing up as a doctor. So, yes, yeah, so that's what your sketches should be. Still, if you're seeing... It's simply just a design. Well, I don't know. What's her ethnicity? She could be any ethnicity here. Um, what's her, you know... Um, is she pretty? Is she, like... has she? Is she intelligent? Will she have a bigger forehead? Like, I know these are, like, characteristics of... Um, like, you know, so... These are, like, caricatures... But like, if even your first ideas, if somebody says to me like, okay, well, I need you to design a woman for me, my default would be like the woman that I think is most attractive. I'll I'll do that, right? Well, so are they, I need to know more. What is the woman's role? Is she a mother? Okay, well, she's got to be old enough to bear children. Um, what 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 is what is her role in the film is she just a side character is she is she a working mother is she a stay at home mom then i've got an idea for costume i've got an idea for like you know grooming you know what is she is she middle size is she overweight is she underweight is she hourglass you know uh pear shape um you know muffin top whatever you know you gotta you, you have to this is what i'm saying it's like posting this for for feedback is all well and good angela but there ha you have to give people something all right you have to so you have to look and then all these people are going to say uh um they're just asking it's, and then they're often the soft and round hair makes it look really soft i'd love to see different see so people want to see something more so even if it's like charlene looking at her own daughter uh or or going i go through pinterest 
Okay. Um, I'm going to come on camera in a minute. Now, now I, I get, get bored, bored sometimes, sometimes of, of doing my own stuff. So I love to draw my wife. You see it on the wall there. I've got this sketch pad here. Sometimes I'll actually look at photos of her and look at what she's wearing. Or sometimes I'll, I'll draw in what I'd like to see her wearing. I, she likes the 1950s. So I go to Pinterest and I look at 1950s uh, things and I poses and things and I look at even even boring catalog shoots that I find interesting. I go I go sketching her in these things. Um, then when uh, Halloween comes up, I don't just make up the the costumes. I go and I look at again catalog costumes, fancy dress. I look at. Uh, I look at um, Halloween uh, pinups. I look at all kinds of things. Uh, Christmas catalogs, fancy dress, all kinds of things. And that's for... So even if you get a basic idea of a, like a character, go to Pinterest. Look for some poses there and make at least 10 drawings. 15 drawings. One drawing is not enough to, to have an opinion of, of, uh, of anything, Angela. Um, so JP Jerome, um, JP Jerome has done this. This is JP Jerome is doing commissions for people. Um, again, JP. Uh, he says a massive hello to AMB family. It's a long time since I've been working on a number of projects. I can finally get back to the library. So he hasn't really been doing li uh, library exercises, and JP has been jumping around, and do he ha he hasn't been doing the library in the order it should have been done. And the problem with that is 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 you don't follow the laws and the structures and then you know when you come to do things like this it you know while I can see he's watching my material and he's taking note of things like slowing in and expression changes and things like that certain aspects like the uh, solidity in the face particularly the solidity in the face um, is is missing and the the hair model um, of the character so you know it JP I'm not going to keep banging that drum uh, about it about how you kind of need to work on things like that but it I just think just knowing a little bit about the face would be able to help you here in terms of okay well the hair the hair model of this character for example um so if you if you'd done those head turnaround head constructions in the basics, which I'm not sure if you did or you didn't, JP, I can't remember, you'll notice how I I simplify the stick man, right? Into this diamond shape. You know. So what that does is that leaves this mass behind the head, right? So that's where the hair is gonna go. So let's turn this into a little girl so if i was going to animate this kind of little girl that you've got hair where you kind of say well okay even like i'm i'm at that level now where i wouldn't really worry about structure to be honest with you because i just i just know it and i do it instinctively but i'm gonna do something right very quickly which is kind of like what I think, which is kind of like what I think you, the movement you've done anyway, right? Um, right. Just gonna come up here like this. Bum, 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 bum. Let me just put another frame here. Up, um, right. And I'll just exit it out without the follow through 
or the secondary reaction and all that. I mean, it's nice that you're actually trying to do secondary reaction and all those things, but just the thing that really lets it down is the is the base character model. It just doesn't appear to have a a model. Um, do it. Uh, the the hair the the just lack of consistency um, in it. So let's let's talk about this shape, right? This is the shape of the head. Right. I'm gonna put the ear here. Right. This is the shape. Mm. And what's your what's your style? So then I'm going to create like a center line here, right? just like this, All right? I'm going to do that. Right? So now again here, this is why we do things. And, and if you look at that exercise that um, Gur, was it, da, who did that? think it was um, Gerbis she put the the extremes of that head turn right you see this is so much simpler than the stick man you do in the basics archive because once you understand it you simplify it and then you can see just how fast it is to knock this stuff out right because you can understand that now this is going to be I'm going to up the angle here just a little bit right. let's keep that dead straight right. see now you see I'm moving this shape let me check this in accordance to this yes that's all good Alright. Here. This is gonna come back. Alright. Occipital part of the skull, you see. Let's put this here. Let's have that there like that. There we go. Just tidy that up a bit. Right, bum bum bum, bum bum bum. The little drummer boy, pa ra pa bum bum. Right, so then this is gonna come here like this. A bit of a nose. That cheek becomes a nose. Let's put that in there. Put that a little bit more to the side. So then the occipital bone comes into play. Right. Bum, 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 bum. I'll make that little bit bigger. There we go. So, ba -ba -bum. And that's going to come out. So, occipital bone, right? You see, that's the You see, once you learn the things that I drum into you guys that you should be learning, it really becomes very easy, right? Um, all right, so now we're going to talk about your character's head, right? Hair, okay, so the, it's going to run away, right, like this, right? So, let me just have a 
further look. Yeah. Okay. So she's got like this double parting in her hair, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna do something like this, right? And these two shapes are gonna form the 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 main aspect of the head right so you need to work this stuff out right so even if you're gonna put a bit of follow through on it right let's come but let's let's figure out this right Let's bring this around there like that. Spring. Oh, shut up. That's the eraser tool, you stupid. Right. Let's bring that around there like that. Bring that around there like that. Boom, boom. You see? Now it's going to come just to one here. Right. Then we're going to have maybe cheat it there like that. Bum, 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 there. Right. So that's that bit of the hair sorted out. So there's a middle parting now. Right. Middle parting. See a little bit more of that middle parting there. It's a little extreme. That's better. Right. Don't see any of it there. Don't see any of it there. Maybe you see it there. Bum, 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 bum. There we go. Now, the, the hair. So I'm going to imagine it being something like this let's take it over to the side there like that let's have it covering the ear all right this i like it i like my fuller hairstyle but let's just put it there like that right, right. so now here it's going to be coming back on itself. Probably lowering more to this side. Going around more there. Maybe coming over the shoulder a little bit here. Like this. Right. Maybe break it up a little bit here. Right. That. Bum, 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 bum. Then we're gonna switch directions. Right. Bum, bum, bum. The little drummer boy. Ba -ba -bum -bum -bum. Right, so I'm going to have it switch up to this side. All in the while, you see it's this shape here. Then here's where it's going to come back on itself. Like that. Bum, 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 right? So you can see the hair's got solidity, and when it's in between, it'll follow through and overlap just nicely. Facial features, again, um, you're going to want to think about the center line so maybe this eye is going to be here this eye is going to be here the eye line will be maybe here 
nose is going to be here like this. Right? This kind of thing. So it's again here. Nose is going to be here. Mouth. Mouth is a little bit. Don't like that mouth. Give her a longer foremouth. Like that. I don't know. Right. Open her eyes. Her nose design actually would be like this. Her mouth would be open like that. Boom, boom. There we go. And that's as far as I'm going to take it. But you see, see, once you start, you kind of understand, but you're, 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 because you've kind of been watching me and I know you, you tune in when I do the Santa and you, you picked up on some of these little touches which are really nice like the, the I was telling you about 10 frame slow ins and all those kind of things and the little bit of anticipation I see that I see that you're taking in the things that I say but the basic fundamentals are not there for it to work well um, I can see what you're trying to do but what's taking away the professionalism is those basic fundamentals, which aren't necessarily just about the solid drawing, okay? It's about this, you know, it's about having the expression being big enough to read in the anticipation, having the poses, the silhouettes being nice. Uh, so what you're doing is, is you're playing with the laws of life, Um but you're lacking the laws of movement, right? Uh, which are those fundamentals. The timing is good, though. Um, which is what you've really, you've really used your slowing in and slowing out nicely. That little head turn there, though, could be stronger. There's not enough of a head turn in the action uh, she makes there. But I love the expression change. Um, so that's, that's really good that's really good what you've you've taken on those aspects but i feel jp you gotta work your fundies man otherwise this is never gonna go away it's always gonna be plaguing your efforts and you can see fundies are so easy look how i mean they just bang this out right and i could go in there and you know just add to it and put other things and it would be just as effortless so fundamentals are extremely important okay um, that's why I structure the late training library the way I do um, and I oh and I in one of the bundles you can now buy the advanced in another bundle but it costs more in one of the bundles I deliberately leave out the advanced because I know you know people are gonna want to jump around um, get ahead of themselves a little bit now JP is successfully doing commissions and I'm I'm happy for him and he should be doing that but he knows when he comes to me and I talk to him I'm, I'm gonna talk to him straight because I care about him and I'm gonna keep banging the fundamental drums at him because that's what he needs in order to he's got the no knowledge not the know-how he's got the knowledge to to know what he wants and get it across which is actually really good JP but it's never going to look right until you sort your fundies out, right? Um, Kevin Silver, these are great. These are fantastic. You're still having struggle with the mouths on, on this, uh, but but I don't on for for the most part I don't mind. I think your line drawing, your proportions, your even your choices of line is getting better. Legs width. A uh, little bit strange in some of these, but um, 
definitely seeing improvement here still really struggling to get those sometimes you get it right but when the face is at an angle you're really struggling to get those uh, proportions and things put in it's like you're drawing the outline shape but and you're trying to fit the face in but you're going to have to adjust those outlines you see her mandible is not going to be all the way here um, especially if it's on the cheek side here so but this is part and parcel of the growth growth pro process faces are your um or your weakest area i would say but just keep going because every time i mean these these are actually quite nice these are actually quite nice drawings in 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 regard you know in regard to the way they look they almost look like graphic design album cover art just just slightly naive in the face just slightly lacking in the face uh, a little bit and in in the proportional balances of certain body parts but you're getting better and better your your hands are, are getting you know you're getting better kevin no doubt about it so it's a very strong post from you definite i would say definite significant improvement in this one um kevin cammons um yeah just keep going with these i was just what I would say is, is weight your line, you you you're you're shading it, but it's kind of neither here nor there. Let's heavy some of those lines, and you know, because uh, because your lines are all getting lost in the smudge and the the pencil. So make sure we heavy some of those shadow lines. Gerbis's second attempt at the front walk, already much better. I remember seeing this. Um, I think she did the let's have a look yeah this is better um your arm in 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 contrast to diana your your this arm is swinging more than the other arm but there's definitely the down in the uh in the steps of the arm and the arm swing is more natural now Yep, I would leave it at that, Gerbis. Um, the only thing about wibbly wobbly in the head is, is it's growing and shrinking in mass a little bit. You can see that ball is growing and shrinking in mass uh, as you're doing the up and down of the head. But that's not a biggie. You know, you know, the head turns is where we're at, and that's where you're going to learn to sort that out. These exercises aren't even about volumes; they're more about arcs and timing and slowing in and slowing out. And yeah, that's a good walk. Um, great stuff. I'm not going to hang around too long on that. Now, Selena Nina. I've saved Selena Nina till last. Um, because I think it's important uh, to have a chat to her about this. She says, Hi friends, I finished my own bouncing ball test this week. And I remember back in April 2020, I tried to do my own bouncing ball test. But I still didn't understand enough about timing after my review of the bouncing ball lessons and swinging. I wanted to give this another try. I had a lot of fun with this. I also got the spring idea from the pendulum lessons. Thank you to everyone for the support. Okay. So let's have a look at this. Now this is cute, um, Selena, and definitely the timing on this is significantly better than the other one that you did. Um, but what I will say is, is now you have been through, I want you to do this, here's what I'm setting you a task, all right? I want you to do this same assault course that you did with the spring again, right? because now you've worked your way through the library you've also been through the flower sack sessions which is all about the life all about the secondary action all about the you know the 
the follow through the you know the anticipation so this ball for example you're kind of it feels like you're stringing together exercises that you've already done like the in we do this kind of double bounce we do the squat into we already i want you to do your own bounce right so why can't he come bouncing down uh, why can't he come bouncing down, roll, bang back, roll back? And you don't have to do what I'm saying now, but but something like that, your own ideas, you know? Then have him kind of like uh, bounce about, bounce on this thing. Now, what you've kind of missed even on this one is is the first, the first hop is fine because he hops on there, but then as he lands, I don't feel that the spring you know goes enough right it should go deeper right especially if he's pushing against it right so this 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 thing right he should go one on here and it should maybe go down a bit and then he should go up then it'll go down a bit again right and then if he comes and he really squashes on it then he's gonna completely close in on itself right and then it'll when he jumps off it'll kind of go it'll sp spring from side to side and then like a like the like the heavy ball or the pendulum spin maybe you can put some multiples in there or you could have it just stuck out it'll go from side to side and eventually settle to a stop so it's like a toy -yo 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 -yo. you know we miss that opportunity because it feels like you're doing you're 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 doing the stuff that you know how to do which is great you're squashing and stretching the ball and the ball feels great but this thing doesn't really have much of a feel to it but then that said the ball the ball should have a bit of additional things in it now now that you've been through the entire library and you're, you're, you're animating on your own, you should be throwing in some secondary action on that ball or some anticipation rather than just doing the basic bounces that you've learned, right? So here you got this. And then, then here it doesn't, after that, it doesn't feel like he's going to, it feels like he's really coming in here. So there's nothing, it's it's not so much the timing is, is wrong. It feels that the acting is, is, is off choice. So here he's really squashing and then suddenly just a tiny little uh, move off the spring. So the spring doesn't really have any impact of being there or not for this. So then he, he could go really fast like bing, bing, bang, bam against this wall, you know. And he could come crashing down here, bounce a few times and almost feel like he's dizzy, right? Again, you don't have to do what I'm suggesting to you, right? But just act um, whatever fun idea comes into your head, Selena, right? Your bounces, your slowing in and slowing out of the, of the bounces is all right. It's fine. It's more the choices that you're making and the arcs and the acting that, that, are, that are not really. So like here he comes up the wall, right? So comes up the wall that's fine he's you know there's nothing wrong with that but it's they're all the same timing right point 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 it could be like one two three four or you know maybe gets the first one <clears throat> kind of messes up falls back down <clears throat> it could mean more work and you know i know it's not the most exciting thing but it could be a lot of fun and it doesn't take that long because it's only a ball right so so he's here, and then here again, you're really squashing him. But it's like a trick that you've learned, like, okay, I'll squash him. But like, he can do so much more than just squash. And then even that, there's not much of a jump, right? So maybe he could roll back, maybe hop forward, have a little look by stretching and looking, hop back again, then maybe hop, and then almost fall off the edge, hop, 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 hop. And then like maybe do a few breaths, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Then go roll, then jump up happiness and roll out. That kind of stuff. Um, that kind of stuff, Selena. So 
while it shows, yeah, you, you kind of like, you can now weight your ball and you can squash and stretch your ball. Um, I do feel some of the squashing d isn't complemented enough by the stretch. It feels like sometimes it just feels like you're just doing this shape. If you're going to do this shape, get into it. Maybe anticipate. So the ball's here. He goes, he goes up, up on himself, and then he suddenly goes into a squash straight shape right then he goes even more squash so it's like an anticipation of the squash right then he goes into a real squash shape then he almost like before he he's it's such a squash shape that he flips up on himself before stretching out you know doesn't have to be this this is too ex this is very exaggerated but you see it just needs a little bit more in that regard but this and this selena is the perfect way right before you do a flower sack your own flower sack exercise which i know you're going to do uh because i know you're planning on revisiting those probably then do it with this guy first because before the flower sack there's always a ball and it doesn't take that long to do right and it's fun you can explore it throw it away and you know just the same way that like I was able to bash out that thing for JP you could bash this out test things try things rather than playing it so safe right hopefully that gives you some things to think about um, Selena but a great test nonetheless <laughs> and a good thing that you're doing that to try and consolidate everything that you know uh, so that's that that is the weekly wall review of the growth development and progress if you want to join this group facebook amb animation real animator growth development and progress if you want to do the studies that these guys are doing um you want to learn from the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation visit ambanimation.com click on real animator training or join the real animator training library you will be treated to this page with videos, information, telling you about why this is the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation. And you can see how it's transforming people's lives on a bunch of my live streams on my channel. Here's someone who uh, you can also see their work in this video. Split into two training archives are what people follow step-by-step -step training videos to really make you get the goods you can save money and get them in bundles or you can buy them individually you've seen people going through the basics exercises uh, there's intermediate exercises there's advanced exercises there's anatomy exercises and there's random pick up and play with the exception of this archive uh, animation lectures all of these are step by step draw along animate along with me as i do it okay watching these videos like somebody else's youtube uh courses is not going to help you this isn't the hair to give you just a bit of light relief this is here to transform your life to make you into the animator you wish you were okay so you can be that just follow along with these videos don't get any ideas that you think you know better otherwise why buy into it in the, the first place things aren't working for you right you want them to work for you i'll make them work for you but you gotta listen to me and follow along with me as i do them otherwise it's not gonna happen and it, that's why it hasn't been happening so you're watching things you're getting ideas and you're going and playing that's a great way of having fun fantastic recreation but it doesn't mean you're gonna get anywhere doing that right this is a called real animator training for a reason it works okay anyway for people who like to just watch and go and do their own things we have those as well in these edutainment uh archives here uh their sessions uh demos the best example being this how to animate your own film series where you can watch 56 live streams of me animating to this level a two minute film from start to finish to this hardcore high feature Disney animation quality. You can see that being made from start to finish over 56 live streams. So this is more like the kind of alternate course material that other people try to pull off as courses. I don't, 
I call it out for what it is, edutainment. It's great content, and I, 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 I charge for it, but I don't try to pull the wool over your eyes that it's training material, okay? So you really want to turn your life around the training archives. You want to just be a great hobbyist, get ideas, get inspiration, enjoy watching a master at work, the edutainment archives. That's that's what it is. Right, okay, so I have said that. Real Animator Training Library, go join it if you want to, if you really want to make any progress. Let's face it, nothing else works. And I'll come and um, talk to you guys on the chat. Uh, let's get rid of that. Uh, -bum. You see, even my free material, like the Stars and Breakdown, that, I, that I'm going to leave on my YouTube channel is better than everyone else's courses. Thank you very much. Right, so um, let's have a look at what people are saying in the chat. Alexia Rice, how are you? Octavio Velasquez. Um, bum, bum, bum. Thank you, Mr. AMB, from the feedback. Getting a lot of cool ideas. Yeah, you should. This is the time for you to let your imagination go. Time to let your imagination flow. You know? Don't hold yourself back. Life Fantasy is going to have dinner and play video games for the night. <laughs> um... I feel this exercise should either be intermediate or advanced archives since you have to plan this animation. I don't know if it's in Vimeo or just on YouTube. I wonder what she's talking about. Different angles are something I have to learn. Does perspective play a part? No, perspective. Perspective will play a part, but the thing is, is it's more about understanding the structure of the form and understanding the way the shapes change and how something is contained within a shape and not contained within a shape. Perspective, I feel, is overrated and exaggerated and you'll always find um, somebody who thinks they, you know, who has this mathematical way of drawing perspective with cubes and whatever and they think that's the only way and they whatever and then they, if something is done in a different way, they'll you know, they, they, they shit their pants and they think that, that, that it shouldn't be done that way. Ultimately, animation is about, and drawing, drawing is about the shapes, okay? And the shapes, it's creating a convincing illusion with shapes, okay? So you can fit my face into a triangle, you can fit it into a square, right? When it moves, it's you know, still a triangle and it's still a square, all right? But that square becomes more rectangular when it's down here and more square-like when it's up there. The triangle gains width, it shrinks, it gains length. There are many ways, like, okay, so of, of balancing the shapes. Um, all of this learning cube perspective and all that Personally, I find those drawings really generic to look at. Very on it. Like you saw me looking at Glenn Keane's stars, and that's a real draftsman. Okay, when I look at these drawings where people have clearly they've made their characters out of cubes and and cylinders and yawn yawn entry level stuff. Okay, and it's a good way to feel your way into it but not to hang around okay which is why I poo poo it because you guys are learning and you can try it and you can feel good and it'll yeah this works this formula works but here's the problem you go look online you go look at deviant you go look wherever everybody's stuck in that formula and nothing looks special no, no, nothing looks like they can really draw it just looks like they've got a method it doesn't look like they can really draw they really understand how to use line their drawings lack energy it lacks it lacks all those things if you take your time and master line and shape and then perspective 
will no longer be a formula for you. You'll be able to look at perspective and contain it with line and shape. And let's face it, we have tools now. Before we didn't have tools, but we have tools now, which make drawing perspective a hell of a lot easier. So it's not so much about whether it's right or not right. It's about whether the illusion works or not how appealing your illusion is, right? So if you go down this route of trying to mathematically draw in this perfectly perspective way and all that, especially if you're interested in drawing the human figure and or the animal figure and, and motion and things like that, if you're interested in architecture and landscape, knock yourself out. But if you're interested in the human figure, I would say it's a waste of energy and time. It might be something worth dabbling into, but not hanging around, okay? Just understand anatomy. Anatomy, um, and as I said, Kevin Silver, you're, you're showing vast improvement. You just keep working and these things are stuck. What's happening is, is you're like a lump of clay, Kevin. And every time you're doing it, you're being molded and all of the all of the rubbish is being thrown away and that perfect or that great godly shape or that statue within the stone is starting to show. Okay? That's what it is. Just stick at it. Have patience. Let it grow. Okay? Um AMB, they were broadcasting El Cid the Legend on local TV channel. Just made me so happy, and I think I know which scenes you animated. Yeah. It's funny, as I'm designing the great one, his proportions are starting to look like El Cid characters. And I'm thinking, oh no, <laughs> it's becoming El Cid. That's the last thing I want it to be. I love El Cid, but those guys are a little bit over the OTT in their size. Um, Akal the Warrior Daniel Garcia missed that little bit of info that I was helping him with um Okay, that's it. I feel we are done with the chat. AMB, is there an acrobatic fighting style that you think actually looks nice? Yes. The one I've given the Garnhopper. Taekwondo. My style. I love it. Taekwondo. Old school Taekwondo. I can't stand all this. Um... If you look at films like... Uh... No Retreat, No Surrender. Or you look at uh, films like uh, Best of the Best. Old 80s corny karate films. Really not, 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 not very good, okay? The Karate Kid had really bad fighting, but that was a great piece of filmmaking. No Retreat, No Surrender had was a really bad piece of filmmaking, but had amazing fight scenes. I never felt John claude Van Damme could choreograph a fight for shit. The guy had amazing skill and flexibility, but all he ever did was a boring jump spin kick in slow motion and drop into the splits. But he had someone else, this was his first film, and he was a villain, and somebody else choreographed him. Some, some I think, Korean or Chinese guy choreographed him. And it's amazing, amazing stuff. Um absolutely love that kind of acrobatism also i like the uh, early jackie chan uh i don't like wushu wire play I never like jet lee's work um i love police story an armor of god there's this great scene of jackie fighting three um african american i don't know if they're african american but they're certainly of African descent uh, 
uh, women in bikinis and they're kicking the crap out of him and it's funny it was so much fun and in police story the end fight in the department store and the you know uh, using the clothes uh, so much fun I don't like his one-on-one -on -one fights that's where it shows his the, the weakness but uh, in terms of the um, sincerity of the fight but he was never about being completely sincere but early Jackie Chan I think is is for acrobatics is the best um, and that's not wushu uh, and then you have uh, you have Donnie Yen uh, Donnie Yen is great uh, I wouldn't say Ip Man was uh, was acrobatic but he's he's you know this kind of acrobatic fight style I like um, uh, Tony Ja on back and um, there's this other one uh, Tony Ja is also good uh, the protector um, where he's going and, and then he fights a capoeira guy um, a little OTT for me like I've always liked the sharpness and the directness of Bruce but if I'm going for acrobatics these are the kind of things that I like uh, so there's plenty of acrobatic fighting styles that look really nice it's all about looking nice that's what acrobatics is but it's when those acrobatics are taken to a level where the weight and the power comes out of the blows um, like when you're using wires I mean for example the matrix is just awful because those guys aren't very good martial artists but even you have a great martial artist like Jet Li who's who's one of the best out there in terms of performance uh, wushu that's what it is he's hanging from wires and ropes and things and all of the weight is taken out of his techniques and moves and and then a tiny little hit hits another person and they go spinning from the wire like it doesn't for me feel genuine it's it just it's just too much and that's what anime fights sometimes feel like for me um, so if this is what if this is going back to what I was saying about anime fighting acrobatism ac uh, athleticism and gymnastics is fantastic to put into fight scenes I mean having a bunch of people being really raw and brutal and real is not the most exciting I mean I love Bruce Lee but even he used to say he would never really kick above the waist uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in combat he, but he did it for camera so even his stuff looks nice for, for the camera you know but so it's, I like a lot of acrobatic fights but um, as long as as long as it sells well as long as as long as it feels like somebody could really get hurt and these guys are actually really trying to trying to hit each other and it's not just you know and a little bit of spin hair and a weightless flying hair with a it's just yeah um, not my thing and I can't stand those old uh, kung fu movies where they're constantly blocking pa, 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 catching the leg between the leg and then starting to fence with the foot <laughs> then eventually <laughs> yeah um, I like all kinds as long as it as long as it as long as it look convincing you know even those Bourne movies have got some interesting fights even some of those dodgy Liam Neeson and Denzel Washington things where they just shake the camera up and you don't really see any fights if it's good filmmaking and it sells it then um, then then it works you know um, yeah maybe just watch the fights of some of them because some of them are really you know I love the acting no retreat no surrender is one of my favorites but the act I love the acting especially the repeated shouting of Jason like it's like they're using the same voice dubbing as he's going Jason Jason <laughs> as his dad's yelling at him in anger it's just, 
<laughs> you know, but ah, oh, you got yeah. That's one of the reasons I love it. I used to yell that in school to the anger of my teachers. Anyway, I this is going on way too long, uh, and now we're just having fun. So I'm going to end the stream. Um, it was an amazing stream, actually. Really, really enjoyed uh, analyzing Glenn Keane's stars and uh, so those of you who've just got the end of the stream, go watch the beginning. Go watch, you know, if anything, just watch the. It's probably, in my opinion, one of the most interesting uh, character breakdowns I I think I've done, and I thoroughly enjoyed doing it. Okay, people, three hours, three and a half hour live stream. I think that's a nice long enough live stream, and I will see you all on the next one. Over and out. Bye-bye. And remember, 